sir, we pro we MSMEs are providing employment and we contribute significantly to our uh, GDP. We have many challenges today to run our industry, sir. It is alarming that financial literacy in India lags behind that of many countries. According to global survey, only about 24% of Indian population is aware of basic financial literacy as it is directly related to financial inclusion, which in turn plays a major role in fostering the economic growth of the country. The need for financial literacy to incorporate financial inclusion is now widely recognized by all stakeholders including policy makers, bankers, researchers and academicians across the globe. Entrepreneurs need to know how to make the best use of their resources and navigate through any challenges they may face drawing on financial literacy, entrepreneur skills and business know-how. Towards this, Kasia in association with SIDBI and Department of Industries and Commerce had organized this important program for the benefit of our member units in particular and for the MSMEs in general. I am sure today's program on financial literacy can be an important tool for helping MSMEs and potential entrepreneurs to obtain access to finance and strengthen money management skills. Uh, I want to add today, like our uh, small industry ministers had shown much interest in SMEs and today he agreed to be there with us. Uh, when we met him last time, what he said, since this uh, Gralashmi guarantee scheme is announced today all over the state, uh, his government and party instructed him to be in his home district. So what he said, this Gralashmi program also postponed for several, like two, three times it is postponed. If it is postponed, I will be definitely come. I want to be there with you. And that is why he requested us don't postpone this program. Uh, I hope Gralashmi program will be postponed and I will be with you. And I want to be with you like that, he said. And one more, today our uh, principal secretary also promised and our director also promised to be here. The problem is uh, Karnataka ramp uh, uh, SIP presentation was scheduled for 24th and 25th. That was uh, postponed, three, four states, two days. It could not be completed. So that first is the date given to them. And yesterday there was a virtual call Entire the structure of the SIP has been changed and uh, the our government, uh, DIC department has to ready with the presentation for 1st uh, of September and they are busy with that. Still we requested them at least be there here for the uh, inauguration, inaugural session since DMD of Shilpi is here with us. So they said they will try but uh, they could not come so far. So we have started the meeting without waiting for them. They may join us at any time, sir. Uh, one more, in this occasion, I used to remember the kind gesture of Sidbi that during the construction of this facility where we are standing today, we have faced a financial crunch to complete the building. That part, and time, part of time, Sidbi come forward to fund us 2 crores rupees with 2 years interest-free holiday. With the kind gesture of Sidbi, today we are in this uh, beautiful uh, building, sir. Today, again, I explained to our uh, DMD, sir, we are building a Kasia Center of Excellence and uh, Innovation in Dabaspet. And there also, we have spent almost 18 crores of rupees, sir, and we are stuck for funds. Like what happens, the idea of when we started the project, we thought of getting uh, grants from the government. Now, suddenly what happens, all the central government and state government says, we will not fund for the building. We fund only for the equipments. That is where we are stuck with the funds. I requested our general manager to help us with the 10 crores loan with the similar terms with at least uh, two years holiday, interest free holiday. I think uh, he said he will try his best and I request the DMD to consider the proposal and help us. Uh, so again, like what we did in this building, how we helped that project also, let it complete through CDB assistance, sir. So I once again thank everyone and uh, 
uh, again welcome all the like our city people to be joining us for this important event sir thank you kasya also welcome all the electronic and print media representatives present who are present here ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದ ಉದ್ಘಾಟನೆ ದೀಪ ಬೆಳಗಿಸುವ ಮೂಲಕ ಎಲ್ಲ ವೇದಿಕೆಯ ಮೇಲಿರುವ ಅತಿಥಿಗಳೆಲ್ಲರೂ ದೀಪ ಬೆಳಗುವುದರ ಜೊತೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಸೇರಿಕೊಳ್ಳಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಕೇಳ್ಕೊಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ಐ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಗೆಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಜಾಯಿನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಲೈಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಲ್ಯಾಂಪ್ ಟು ಇನಾಗ್ರೇಟ್ ದ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಅತಿಥಿಗಳಿಗೆಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಧನ್ಯವಾದಗಳು ಅತಿಥಿಗಳಿಗೆ ಗೌರವ ಸಮರ್ಪಣೆ ಐ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಕಾಸ್ಯ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಶಶಿಧರ ಶೆಟ್ಟಿ ಟು ಫೆಲಿಸಿಟೇಟ್ ಸುಧಾಂತ್ ಮಂಡಲ್ I request Kasia Vice President uh, Mr. Raj Gopal to felicitate Satyaki Rastogi. We welcome Mr. Suresh. Joint Director of Districts, Industries and Centres, Bangalore, Alpha. I request Joint Kasia Joint Treasurer, Malaysia Gowda to felicitate Sri Yen Suresh. joint treasurer yes sorry treasurer <laughs> i request a kasya 
joint secretary shriyansh chain and uh, uh, Ar- 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 rural and also arun padiyar joint secretary for rural and urban to felicitate mr sri uligian b deputy general manager bangalore regional office cb ಈಗ ಅತಿಥಿಗಳಿಂದ ಸ್ಪೀಚ್ ಉದ್ಘಾಟನ ಭಾಷಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಸುಧಾರ್ಥ ಮಂಡಲ್ರವರಿಂದ ಇನಾಗ್ರಲ್ ಸ್ಪೀಚ್ ಬಾಯ್ ಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಸುಧಾರ್ಥ ಭಟ್ ಮಂಡಲ್ ಸೆಬ್ಬಿ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ವಿಶ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಲೇಡೀಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಜೆಂಟಲ್ಮೆನ್ ವಾರ್ಮ್ ಗ್ರೀಟಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸಿಂಪಿ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಟು ಸೀ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ದಿ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಾಮರ್ಸ್ ಗವರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಸ್ಕೇಲ್ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಆರ್ ಕಾಸಿಯಾ ಆರ್ ಕೊಲಾಬೊರೇಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಸಿಡ್ಬಿ ಟು ಆರ್ಗನೈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಔಟ್ ರೀಚ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಆನ್ ಫೈನಾನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಲಿಟ್ರಸಿ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೈ ಪ್ರಿವಿಲೇಜ್ ಟು ಇನಾಗ್ರೇಟ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಔಟ್ ರೀಚ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಇನ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ which will be covering 31 districts of Karnataka and reaching at least 5,000 MSMEs through 21 similar events. MSMEs are the lifeline of any economy and therefore the success of the MSME sector is vital to India's sustainable economic development. As the sector contributes around 30% of the country's GDP and over 45% of exports besides playing a crucial role in employment generation in both rural and semi-urban areas. As you are aware, the Government of India has set up an ambitious vision of reaching the target of 30% MSMEs contributing to GDP by 2025 to support the US 5 trillion economy vision. To realize this vision, the MSMEs are expected to double their absolute contribution from almost US dollars to 0.9 trillion or 30% of the current Indian GDP to USD 2 trillion, that is 40%. of the 2025 India GDP vision. To realize this vision, the Government of India has been formulating various policy measures, transformational digital initiatives, building infrastructure facilities across the nation to strengthen the MSME ecosystem and make them vibrant in realizing the vision of the Government of India. The MSMEs need to fire at a higher pace for the country to achieve the USD 5 trillion economy target by 2025. While recognizing the importance of MSME's contribution to the economy and their role in shaping the overall growth of our country, SIDBI, along with other stakeholders, including the central and state governments, is devising various ways and means to reach out to the MSMEs and creating an enabling and vibrant environment for the growth of the MSMEs. However, lack of awareness about these facilities is a matter of concern. The success lies in information dissemination and imparting knowledge about these initiatives at the grassroots level for successful implementation to ensure that the benefits reach the last mile. To accelerate the development of the MSME ecosystem in Karnataka in a structured and planned manner, SIDBI has signed an MOU with the Department of Industries and Commerce Government of Karnataka. Under the MOU, SIDBI is acting as the MSME partner for the state of Karnataka to give impetus to the MSME ecosystem by working on designing of schemes, suggestions for modification to and improvements in schemes, enabling digital interventions for the benefit of MSMEs, infrastructure development and creation in Karnataka, and impact evaluation. The Financial Literacy Program is being organized with the primary objective of empowering MSMEs across Karnataka. The program seeks to achieve this by raising awareness on formalization of MSMEs, and facilitating credit linkage, market exposure, as well as expanding their customer base through digital presence, specifically utilizing the ONDC platform, etc., and other relevant means. The program is set to commence in this regard, in this grand inaugural event, centered around the thematic focus of creating opportunities, bridging gaps, embarking on a path to financial empowerment. I would like 
to touch upon some of the major initiatives taken by SIDBI that are aligned to boost the MSME ecosystem in the country, which have set the pace for MSME's journey towards unlocking their full potential and contributing to the vision of a USD 5 trillion economy. The first of those initiatives, the key initiatives by SIDBI is the MSME formalization project or the Udyam Assist platform. Now, uh, all of you perhaps would be aware that the MSMEs in the country need to get themselves registered on the Udyam registration platform. Right? And you are required to get an Udyam registration certificate. Increasingly, all the schemes of the state governments as well as the central government, which are applicable for the MSMEs, would be given to only those SMEs who have a valid Udyam registration certificate. As for the uh, last census that was done, there are an estimated 6.5 crore MSMEs in the country. That number has significantly increased over the years, not only because of the increasing number of MSMEs coming into the marketplace, but also because of the traders being included in the definition of the MSMEs. But even if we were to consider the 6.5 crore uh, MSME statistic, uh, it is uh, Unfortunate that just about one and a half crore MSMEs have actually got the Udyam registration certificate to date, which means the remaining five crore MSMEs do not have an Udyam registration certificate and therefore are not formally recognized as MSMEs for them to then avail benefits on all the various state government and central government schemes for the MSMEs. So much so that the banks, though they lend to these enterprises, do not uh, are not able to classify these loans as priority sector loans and therefore they are not able to pass on that benefit to these entities. Now one of the reasons why this Udyam registration certificate has not percolated down to the last mile is because number one of a self-registration process because the MSMEs need to register themselves on this platform. Secondly and more importantly, uh, the primary uh, uh, document or identity which is required to get an Udyam registration number is your PAN number. Right? And we all would be aware that more than 95% of the MSMEs in the country are actually in the micro segment and not in the small or the medium segment. And many or most of these micro enterprises either do not have a PAN number or even if they have a PAN number, they do not uh, file their tax returns right? or may not be willing to share their PAN number for whatever reason. Now, the reason why this PAN number is required is for, as you would be aware, that for the MSMEs, as per the definition given under the MSMED Act, the definition is basis your investment in core plant and machinery and your turnover. Okay? So the information on the investment in core plant and machinery and your turnover is obtained from the uh, ITR, your, the income tax return, which is fetched from the CBDT side, basis your consent and through your PAN number, and also your GST registration. In order to circumvent that uh, problem, what SIDBI had proposed to the Ministry of MSME, which runs the Udyam registration portal, is that since the, there are multiple lenders in the country, including the banks, the uh, NBFCs, the MFIs, who lend to these micro, finance, micro enterprises in the country, basis various other documents that they receive from them, they do a thorough due diligence and then establish whether that entity is a micro, small or medium entity, let us have a platform which will not require the PAN number as a mandatory field, but the banks can upload the information, basis the information available with them as part of their due diligence for extending credit facilities to these entities and the KYC that they have done on these entities. And therefore, we call it an Udyam Assist platform so that the micro enterprises do not register or do not have the need to register themselves but it is through an assist mode where the regulated entities like the banks, financial institutions, the NBFCs and the MFIs, they upload the data on their client base. And through that, the Udyam registration can get generated. It took us a lot of time for us to uh, convince the Ministry of MSME to, uh, to allow us to do this activity. And I'm happy to share with you that the Ministry of MSME has given the approval to SIBI. They have designated SIBI as the authorized agency to get this data and generate the Udyam registration through the ASSIST platform. So we have created a separate platform where the data can get uploaded by these regulated entities. We have instituted a dedupe uh, checking basis uh, Aadhaar number which is the key identity uh, number so that there are no duplicate records and then generate the Udyam registration certificate. The Ministry of MSME as well as the Reserve Bank of India have issued a clarification and a circular uh, 
and in fact the Minister of MSME has issued this to a Gazette notification that the Udyam registration number obtained through the Udyam Assist platform will qualify for priority sector lending by the banks and other institutions. So we are now going ahead with this uh, registration in a big way. We have already uh, you know, uh, registered more than 65 lakh uh, MSMEs in just a, a period of two months. And the idea is to, uh, to at least get two crore micro enterprises registered on this platform by the end of this year. So that is the ambitious target that we have and we are partnering with all the NBFCs and the MFIs and the banks in uh, getting this uh, you know, Udyam registration certificate generated for all their clients and therefore benefit the micro sector enterprises. And just for your information, there is a bulk upload facility also so that individual you know, data submission is not required. The, the regulated entities can upload their data in bulk which is already available with them which will get sanitized uh, by the platform that we portal that we have created. The, uh, the logic that we have created in the portal will sanitize that data De do a dedupe on that data to ensure that there are no duplicate records, there are no false records and then issue the OTM registration certificate and we have seen that the uh, portal is uh, working perfectly fine and in the first iteration itself when we had uh, tested out the uh, portal and the platform through a bulk upload facility, the OTM registration was, uh, certificate was generated in 55 minutes. Right? So uh, therefore that digital tool gives me the, the, the power to generate the Udyam registration certificate within a very short period of time and therefore we have this ambitious target of generating at least two crore certificates in the financial year. The other uh, initiative which of course is not a simply initiative but we are very proud to be part of that initiative is the ONDC uh, platform. As you would be aware, uh, ONDC is open network for digital commerce. I think there is a separate session today on the ONDC platform so it will be spoken about in great detail. But just to give you a very sna uh, a snapshot of what ONDC is all about, it is a first of its kind initiative that aims to democratize digital commerce, moving it from a platform-centric model to an open network. As you all know, e-commerce is growing rapidly in India, aided by the increasing penetration of internet and mobile phones. The ease of operations coupled with digital transformation and availability of wide variety of products at competitive prices has contributed to the growth of e-commerce transactions. However, e-commerce has been out of reach for the majority of sellers, artisans, especially from small towns. Further, these small sellers face several challenges in the current e-commerce landscape such as high commission rates of e-commerce platforms, preferential treatment to the platform's own sellers, and lack of transparency in price fluctuations and processes. To bridge these gaps and to provide an alternative to platform-centric model, the government has developed a network known as Open Network for Digital Commerce or ONDC that aims to create a level playing field for all players. The Open Network is premised upon the core concepts of decentralization, openness and user utility, ensuring greater discoverability, transp transparency and interoperability between the key players that is the seller and buyer. Now coming back to the formalization project, uh, though it is not there in my prepared speech, but I would like to share some additional information with you on the initiatives that SMB is taking that uh, after you get the Udyam registration number or certificate, what next? So what is it the, in, there for the micro enterprises who come on board and join the uh, Udyam registration portal? So what we had done is that uh, we are coming up with several products which will provide small unsecured credit facilities to these micro enterprises for their various financing requirements. One of the products is called the GST Sahai, which we have developed for the Government of India under the uh, regulatory sandbox uh, of RBI, which provides uh, or which seeks to provide uh, bill or sorry invoice financing facility, unsecured invoice financing facility to the micro enterprises. So, if you have received a purchase order uh, you know, from a, a buyer. Against that invoice that you have got, you can avail of finance which is like a working capital for executing that order. And these can be small value uh, finance being made available to the uh, micro enterprises, totally unsecured facility, I don't need any security, any collateral and it is purely digital. You don't have to visit any of my branches, you can do it, it's totally a contactless uh, process. Basis the consent that you give for me to fetch your GST data from the GSTN 
their GST network. And there are several fintechs in the country today who have developed various data analytic tools to analyze the data which is available in the public domain, like your IT returns, like your GST data, like your bank account statements, basis which they run an analytics and tell me what is the credit worthiness of that enterprises, enterprise. So I really don't need for you to submit your audited and annual accounts, which is certified by a chartered accountant or a statutory auditor. No such document is required. I just need the consent for me to access your GST income tax and the bank account statements. Basis which this is a purely contactless, as I mentioned, a credit which can just be dispensed and disbursed to you in hours, uh, not even in days. Okay? So this, uh, we had done the pilot uh, project and uh, established that the product is working in the regulatory sandbox. And now we have made that stack, technology stack, available to all the banks in the country. <laughs> Uh, so we created this as a public good at our own expense and we have given this uh, technology stack to all the banks in the country. They are now, they have to accept that API, the stack, and then create their own business rule engine and their own product to uh, come and give unsecured invoice financing facility to their customers. As a beginning to take the initiative, we are in the process of tying up with various anchors like the large uh, buyers like the the FMCG uh, companies like Hindustani Unilever or Pedilite or Dabur you know, or uh, uh, Colgate, Marmogil, whoever. So we are tying up all, with all these large uh, entities who have a lot of SME vendors. They buy, procure from these SME vendors. So all these SME vendors of these large entities can now avail finance from Sirvi through this GST uh, Sahai uh, product. Right? In addition to that, we are uh, we have a product called Prayas, where we reach out directly to the micro enterprises who have graduated from the uh, JLG uh, kind of a loan given by the microfinance institutions. Uh, how many of you are aware of how a microfinance institution works? Uh, okay. Uh, most of you perhaps are not micro enterprises here. You are small and medium enterprises, so you will perhaps not. They are micro? Okay, so you would be availing finance from the MFIs, microfinance institutions? You don't. Uh, what is the reason for that? Okay. So what is the alternate source of financing for you? Nationality the bank. Okay, okay. So maybe you are perhaps uh, uh, the upper layer or the creamy layer of the micro enterprises, but there are enterprises at the very grassroots level, at, at the village level for example, uh, who generally take credit from the microfinance institutions because they have a very huge network in the hinterlands of the country. Uh, so the microfinance institutions generally lend under the JLG model, which is called a joint liability group. So they create a group of three, four or five uh, micro enterprises and then provide e credit facility to them uh, where you know there is a peer kind of a pressure involved in, in servicing of that uh, debt. But there are certain micro enterprises who have graduated from that joint liability group model and they are now seeking an individual loan in their individual capacity. That is a segment which is not catered to either by the banks or the microfinance institutions or the NBFCs. And that is a segment which is called very fashionably today as the mid missing middle segment. And so Silvi has uh, come up with a product where we fin provide finance directly to these micro enterprises. And these are very small enterprises where the ticket size is between say 1 lakh to 50,000 to uh, 3 lakh rupees. Okay? So small ticket size loans are being provided directly by Silvi to these enterprises in association and in partnership with these microfinance uh, institutions. But we onboard these clients on our own books. I take the entire risk on my books and I provide credit directly to them. So we are extending this product now and tying up with uh, various other uh, you know, players in the market. For example, uh, we are working with, uh, are you aware of the Jan Aushadi Kendras? Yes. Right? So Jan Aushadi Kendras also require finance uh, particularly working capital finance for sourcing the medicines from the centralized agency pro uh, procurement and dispersal agency and then sell it to the customers in the villages and the uh, small towns. So we are now tying up uh, with the, uh, the central procurement agency which procures the medicines, the generic medicines from the OEMs and then supplies to these Janashri Kendras 
in providing credit to these Jan Ashadi mm -hmm. Kentras at a very small level, which will be again, uh, uh, you know, without any collateral, collateral fee uh, credit facility to these Jan Ashadi Kentras. In addition to that, uh, we are in the process of developing a product. It will take us some time to do that. But I'm happy to share with you that we are working on a revolving credit, unsecured revolving credit to these very micro and nano enterprises of even say 10,000, 20,000 rupees. For example, if we have a vegetable vendor on the street, he does not need lakhs of rupees of uh, credit. He perhaps needs 5,000 rupees or 10,000 rupees as working capital and his working capital cycle may be say two days, three days, five days or a week. Right? So we are trying to see if we can provide unsecured working capital facilities through the UPI system to these nano enterprises basis the Udyam registration number that is being generated. So there are a variety of products that we are trying to come up to address the financing gaps in the country. Uh, I think in the paucity of time, I will end here. Uh, but we can, I can go on and on on the various initiatives. Uh, Satyati is here, Udanyan is here. Uh, and, and I'm sure if you have any specific queries going forward, uh, they will be too happy to uh, respond to them. Uh, to conclude, uh, the positive confluence of the various initiatives being undertaken is expected to stimulate the Indian economy and put the MSMEs on growth path. Growing digital adoption by MSMEs through e-commerce platforms, use of digital payment methods and other digital tools have contributed significantly to digital footprints of the MSMEs, which has improved profiling of end users, resulting in better credit offerings and customer satisfaction. The emergence of fintech players and their collaboration partnership with traditional banks has enriched the financial ecosystem. By leveraging the public digital infrastructure in the form of India's tag, innovative solutions for facilitating finance for the MSME sector have emerged. These solutions have not only eased access to credit for MSMEs, but have also enriched underwriting by lenders. The ongoing digital finance revolution mentioned above, along with other digital in interventions, namely the account aggregator framework, ONDC, Open Credit Enablement Network or OKEN, shall provide further boost to the MSME sector. Once again, I am privileged to join you on this occasion. I hope we are collectively able to achieve our objective of spreading financial awareness and emerging opportunities for the MSMEs in Nama, Karnataka. Thank you. Now I request uh, Mr. Satyaki Rastogi to have a special note. Hello, Rigu. Namaskara. Good morning. Uh, respected Sri Sudhatta Mandal, DMD Siddhi, Sri Shashidhara Shetty, President Kasia, all the dignitaries on the dais, past presidents of Kasia, my friends from PF Pinya Industries Association, Mr. Arif and Mr. Shiv Kumar, and the August gathering here. Good morning to all of you. Uh, it is a privilege that we are holding this, we have started this program with Kasia and Department of Industries and Commerce Government of Karnataka for financial literacy across the all the districts of Karnataka. So uh, why this thought came to us was that uh, if we look at the MSME ecosystem, 96% or 95% of the units in the MSMEs are micro enterprises. And if you look at that, out of that also 85% must be one man show, just a single person driven a proprietary concern. And uh, this person is so engrossed in doing everything that it's very difficult for him to find time to actually keep, keep pace with what are the developments happening in the MSME sector, how the finance is available, where the market is available, how to do that. And so in this aspect we thought it would be good if we can reach out to all the MSMEs in Karnataka, to a lot of MSMEs in Karnataka, where we can tell them about the Government of India schemes, the state government schemes, what SIDBI is doing, what other uh, players in the ecosystem, financial ecosystem are doing, and also what are other 
developments happening in the sector like ONDC, the Oaken Account Aggregator Framework and the slow but steady movement towards digitization. So now things are so digital that going forward uh, you have to be updated with that because everything today because of the fintech players and the ease the, that digitization brings, the like ease of access to finance, that information dissemination on all these things was very important. So the basis this, we decided to organize this program and we are thankful to Kasia and the Department of Industries and Commerce, Government of Karnataka, that they came forward to associate with us and to conduct these programs. Our DMD sir has already spoken, given you an overview of everything that SIPP is doing, most of the things, not everything because I think for everything sir it will require a lot of time to uh, discuss that. But under our present management, we are addressing each and every pain point of the MSME ecosystem and right from a micro nano enterprise to a medium enterprise. So we have not left even one area untouched. And that's what he was talking about, uh, Dimdi sir was talking about all the micro enterprises, his total focus was there on the micro enterprises and the smaller of the MSMEs because that is the area which requires most attention. Coupled with that, we have moved with uh, times and a lot of digitization has happened. So, uh, sir, I want to tell them about the express loan scheme. So today, we have come out with a product. SIDB has come out with a product which we are running on our own where we can give loans up to 1 crore for equipment finance, for machinery finance loans up to 1 crore within 30 minutes. If you are an existing entity having a GST, income tax and your bank data and your bank data then based on a, your financial data, your income tax data and your bank statement we have created a, we take this information and this is triangulated based on a uh, algorithm and it will throw a uh, result if you are eligible within 30 minutes you will be in principally uh, uh, approved a loan of 1 crore. Subsequent to that we only conduct a visit and the loan is sanctioned. So we have had cases here in Bangalore or in my region also all over India where we have disbursed loan within the same day. The application we've got and up to one crore loan within the same day and two crore for our existing customers. So all those who have been with us for a period of two years, this eligibility is two crores. So we've been taking a lot of efforts. We've also downside, uh, you know, simplified our processes. Uh, when I came here and uh, uh, we've been moving over a period of time, but some people have had experience with SIDB long time back. So there was an impression in the uh, industry that SIDB's processes and uh, are very long and it takes a lot of time. But today I can tell you in the last two years, we have doubled our portfolio in Karnataka. So from around 400 crores, we are now around 900 crores of our uh, portfolio in Karnataka, directly linked portfolio. And our footprints are increasing. We were only present in uh, Bangalore, Mysore and Hubali. Now I'm thankful to the management that based on our recommendation, they have agreed to open one more branch in Bangalore and a branch in Mangaluru and, a, and one in Belagavi. So we'll be opening there these three places shortly and we will keep in contact with the industry going forward so that we get the feedback and we can provide the feedback to the management so that better things can be done for the industries in Karnataka. Thank you. Thank you sir. Kasia, welcome. Mr. Sakratos. Director, MSM Media Forum. And also, we welcome Mr. Gopinath, Deputy Director.
we request Srinivas to address the gathering. Suresh, sorry, Suresh. Hello, Namaskara. Artika Sakshatate Bage Ondo, the outreach Karakam on the Idina, Nama Kasia Samse, Sidvi Ago Nama Ilaki Sahayo Gudante, Madidare, Tumaule Karakam. In fact, from last two years, RBA itself is coming down to the district levels and giving lot of awareness among. MSME industries, especially MSMEs, uh, regarding this uh, financial literacy and uh, financial inclusion in industrial developments. Tamgella Gutiro Age, Yaude Ondo Kaigarike na Stapane Mardi Adana successful Agi Nurskondobe Kadre, finance is very key role here. Without finance, we cannot start any industry or business. So, in this case, in our Karnataka Rajya Dali, we have to start the bank in this bank. So, in the case of Karnataka Rajya Dali, we have to start the bank in the KSFC and KSIADC. यू गुलो कई कार्य के गला वंदु स्थापन के आवरो तुम्बा ये चीज़ ना वंदु तो करता है दरअसल क्या ना बैंक ना और के अष्टम दो ये इगा ये नी दे सेक्युरिटाइजेशन एक तो ये रिकवरी पावर सावर का अष्टम दिल्ली लागा आदरे केएसएफसी के सेक्शन 27 ऑफ एसएफसी एक्ट वंदु टोल ये दे दरिंदा आवरो लेंड मरता क्रमेण ना बैंक के गलोरो ये वन दो इंडस्ट्रीज के टर्म लोन कोड तक के स्टार्ट पड़ दो आधुक मतलब केएसएफसी के टर्म लोन को ताई दो बैंक के गलने वर्किंग कैपिटल लिमिट्स ताऊन लो एंजॉय मार ताई दो ये का बैंक ना वो बहुत टर्म लोन में ते वर्किंग कैपिटल ये रडू कोड तले ये का आगा की केएसएफसी एक अदर ना उन दो रिवर मार्ग में को अट द सेम टाइम इंडस्ट्रीज को सपोर्ट मार्ग में को तेली हम कर्नाटक राज्य सरकार हलवार इंटरेस्ट सब्वेंशन स्कीम्स ना केस ऑफ सिक्योरिटी ये वक्त इन दिशा आई तो कोट रुपाय वर्गो आई आई तो लक्ष्य रुपाय इन दायर दो आई तो कोटी रुपाय वर्गो आई तो पॉइंट आई � ये दिना केस सबसे वो लोन्स करता है इधर पर एमएससी सेक्टर्स स्मॉल एंड माइक्रो सेक्टर्स ये परिशिष्ट जाति मते परिशिष्ट वर्ग के दा उन दो एंटरप्राइज़ हैं इधर है आउट गया अप तू टेन क्रोर लोन्स हो फोर परसेंट रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट ली केस सबसे करता है इधर मते ये ये इंटरेस्ट सबवेंशन फोर परसेंट रेट ऑफ इं SCST entrepreneurs, this is being extended to even uh, public sector and uh, nationalized banks also. Now they are also uh, giving uh, at 4% uh, rate of interest for uh, uh, SSI units, MSM units uh, set up by SCST entrepreneurs. Other than the KSFC, the Mahila Uddi Migliganta. 4% rate of interest नली, 4% rate of interest नली, इग्लो और साला मंदोस को नोकता है इधर। इधर जो तक है, कर्नाटक सरकार का कुड़ा, ये न इंडस्ट्री के लो व्यवस्था की बरोद के मते, किरुवंता कई कार के लो एक्सपेंशन, डाइवर्सिफिकेशन, मार्टरेशन मार देके, हलवारो कई कार का नीति के लड़ना तंत्र अनुष्ठान को ले सकते हैं अदर अली मुख्य वाक्य कई कार्य का नीति यारड़ सावर दा इप्पत्तु इप्पत्ते ही दो इधर अली 
ನಮ್ಮ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ನಗರ ಜಿಲ್ಲೆ ಮತ್ತು ಗ್ರಾಮಾಂತರ ಜಿಲ್ಲೆ ಬಿಟ್ಟರೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಜಿಲ್ಲೆಗಳಲ್ಲೂ ಒಂದು ಇನ್ಸೆಂಟಿವ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕನ್ಸೆಷನ್ಸ್ ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ವಿ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ವಿಶೇಷವಾಗಿ ಈ ಕಲ್ಯಾಣ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ರೀಜನ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಅತಿ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಸಬ್ಸಿಡಿಗಳನ್ನು ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಅಪ್ ಟು ತರ್ಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಒನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಝೀರೋ ಫೈವ್ ಕ್ರೋರ್ಸ್ವರೆಗೂ ಎಮ್ ಎ ಎಮ್ ಎಸ್ ಸಿಗೆ ಸಿಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಅಂದರೆ ಮೈಕ್ರೋ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಎಗೇನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮೀಡಿಯಮ್ ಸ್ಕೇಲ್ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಇವ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಟರ್ನ್ ಓವರ್ ಟೂ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಫೈವ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಟರ್ನ್ ಓವರ್ ಸಬ್ಸಿಡಿ ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಡಿಪೆಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಫಾರ್ ಅಪ್ ಟು ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದೇರ್ ಕ್ಯಾಪಿಟಲ್ ಫಿಕ್ಸಡ್ ಅಸೆಟ್ಸ್ ಇದಲ್ಲದೆ ತಮ್ಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿರೋದು ಹಾಗೆ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ನಗರ ಜಿಲ್ಲೆ ಈ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಬಿಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಏರೋ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಆಪ್ ಮೊನ್ನೆ ಚಂದ್ರಾಯಣ ತ್ರೀದಲ್ಲಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಇಸ್ರೋದವರು ದೇ ಲಾಂಚಡ್ ವಿಕ್ರಮ್ ರೋವರ್ ಸಕ್ಸಸ್ಫುಲಿ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಏರೋ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಹಬ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ನಗರ ಜಿಲ್ಲೆಯ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಸುಮಾರು ಏರ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಪಕ್ಕ ಒಂದು ಮೂರು ಸಾವಿರ ಎಕರೆ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಫೇಸಲ್ಲಿ ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಮತ್ತು ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಫೇಸ್ ಅರಳೂರು ದಲ್ಲಿ ಕೂಡ ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಈಗ ರೀಸೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಫಾಕ್ಸ್ಕಾನ್ ಕಂಪ್ನಿ ಕೂಡ ದೇವ್ ಕಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ತ್ರೀ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಏಕರ್ಸ್ ನಿಯರ್ ದೇವನಹಳ್ಳಿ ದೇವ್ ಡೆವ್ ಡೆವಲಪಿಂಗ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ದೇವ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಅದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಏರೋ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿಫೆನ್ಸ್ ಪಾಲಿಸಿ ಅಂತ ಎರಡು ಸಾವಿರದ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತೆರಡರಲ್ಲಿ ರಾಜ್ಯ ಸರ್ಕಾರ ತಂದಿದೆ ಇದರಲ್ಲಿ ಕೂಡ ಹಲವಾರು ಇನ್ಸೆಂಟಿವ್ಸು ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಇನ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರಮೋಷನ್ ಸಬ್ಸಿಡಿ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಪ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಎಕ್ಸಂಪ್ಷನ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಮತ್ತು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಎಫ್ಲುಯೆಂಟ್ ಟ್ರೀಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಇ ಟಿ ಪೀಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ಅಪ್ ಟು ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಕ್ಯಾಟಗರಿ ಎಂಟರ್ಪ್ರಿನರ್ಸ್ಗೆ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಸೊ ಸಪೋಸ್ ನೀವೇನಾದರೂ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯಲ್ ಎಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸಲ್ಲಿ ಏರಿಯಾಸಲ್ಲಿ ಸಿ ಇ ಟಿ ಪಿ ಮಾಡಿಕೊಂಡ್ರೆ ಅಪ್ ಟು ಫೈವ್ ಕ್ರೋರ್ಸ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಕ್ಯಾಪಿಟಲ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಅಥವಾ ಫೈವ್ ಕ್ರೋರ್ಸ್ ಸಬ್ಸಿಡಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯಲ್ ಪಾಲಿಸಿದಲ್ಲೂ ಇದೆ ಬೇರೆ ಪಾಲಿಸಿಗಳಲ್ಲೂ ಇದೆ ಸೊ ಇದಲ್ಲದೆ ಸುವರ್ಣ ವಸ್ತ್ರ ನೀತಿ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟೈಲ್ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ದು ನೀತಿಗಳಿದ್ದಾವೆ ಮತ್ತು ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಾನಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಕೇಷನ್ ಇ ಎಸ್ ಡಿ ಎಮ್ ಪಾಲಿಸಿ ಇದೆ ಐ ಟಿ ಬಿ ಟಿ ಪಾಲಿಸಿ ಇದೆ ಇವುಗಳಲ್ಲೆಲ್ಲ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಈ ಎಲ್ಲ ಪಾಲಿಸೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅವೈಲೇಬಲ್ ಇನ್ ವೆಬ್ಸೈಟ್ ತಾವು ಏನು ಈ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಗಳಿಂದ ಸಾಲ ಸೌಲಭ್ಯ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಸರ್ಕಾರ ನೀಡುವಂಥ ಒಂದು ಸವಲತ್ತುಗಳನ್ನು ಸಹ ಪಡೆದುಕೊಂಡು ತಮ್ಮ ಕೈಗಾರಿಕೆಗಳನ್ನು ಉತ್ತಮ ರೀತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ನಡೆಸುವುದರ ಮೂಲಕ ನಮ್ಮ ರಾಜ್ಯದ ಜಿ ಡಿ ಪಿ ಮತ್ತು ಏನು ಫೈವ್ ಟ್ರಿಲಿಯನ್ ಎಕಾನಮಿ ಇದೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಟ್ ಮಾಡೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಅನುಕೂಲ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಮಂಡನ್ ಸಾಹೇಬರು ವಿವರವಾಗಿ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಇದು ಉದ್ಯಮ ರಿಜಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಒಂದು ಡೀಟೇಲ್ಸು ಸೊ ಈ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಹೇಳಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ನಗರ ಜಿಲ್ಲೆಯಲ್ಲೇ ಒಂದು ಒನ್ ಲ್ಯಾಕ್ಗಿಂತ ಹೆಚ್ಚಿಗೆ ಒಂದು ಎಮ್ ಎಸ್ ಎಮ್ ಎಸ್ ರಿಜಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ ಆಗಿದ್ದಾವೆ ಈಗ ಈವನ್ ಟ್ರೇಡ್ ಕಂಪ್ನಿ ಟ್ರೇಡಿಂಗ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಕೂಡ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಎಂಟೈಟ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಉದ್ಯಮ ರಿಜಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರಯಾರಿಟಿ ಲೆಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಬೇರೆ ಇನ್ನೂ ಸವಲತ್ತುಗಳು ಸಿಕ್ಕೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಇದಲ್ಲದೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕದಲ್ಲಿ ಸುಮಾರು ಒಂಬತ್ತು ಲಕ್ಷಕ್ಕೂ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಎಮ್ ಎಸ್ ಎಮ್ ಎಗಳು ರಿಜಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಆಗಿದ್ದಾವೆ ಈಗ
of Kasia across Karnataka. And the MOU said we would facilitate credit finance MSME members of Kasia for their expansion plans, funding requirements, subject to complying with the eligible parameters, norms of schemes of SIDBI. We look forward to mutually beneficial association for benefiting the MSMEs. Thank you. Mr. Sudant Mandal, you want to just move on from some other assignments. On behalf of Kasia, we thank Sri Sudant Mandal, DMD of Sidbi, for having spared his valuable time to be with us with MSME and inaugurated the program with a thought of provoking keynote address. We thank you very much, sir. Okay. Uh, Namma Kasia. Society President, he want to present a, a bouquet to uh, Sudhant Mandal. Satyaki Rastavi also want to accompany with Sudant Mandal and we thank you very much sir because we will just have a special thanks. You, you are one being promoted and just given a promotion for this program. Thank you so much. Now, the sessions program where we have PPT presentations with complete uh, facilities available for MSMEs. The session one, I welcome Sri Dabashis Pradhan, AGM Sidbi, Pina Bangalore office. Mr. Sri Dabashis Pradhan is going to give a presentation on simplified and innovative financing solution for MSME. May I request Dr. Sakratas to just come on the dais, please? Please come.
over to Devashis Pradhan. Yes sir, Namaskar. I am Devashis Pradhan from Sidhvi. Today I will be sharing you, sharing you different products or financial scheme of Sidhvi for MSMEs and how B Sidhvi had made it easier for MSME to get the benefit in uh, using our technology, innovation and IT infrastructure. Practically, today Sidhvi has made funding for MSME a simpler and a easier thing. A brief introduction about Sidhvi. Sidhvi, a government of India financial institute started in the year 1990. Uh, we are engaged into of funding of MSME, promotion and development. We do funding directly and indirectly. Direct, directly means we do a uh, fund to MSME by providing financial assistance for plant and machinery, land and building, working capital and project financing. And indirectly means we give resource support to NBFC, microfinance companies and bank so that ultimately they can fund to MSME in a cheaper rate In this year, we Sidbi has totally digitalized the MSME funding platform. Our whole operation for funding of MSME is end-to-end digitalized. That is, in case a MSME need any funding requirement, then they have to file online application. Uh, we Sidbi now don't accept offline application. All the application has to be filed in online only. Any documentation that we require, that is, balance sheet, IT returns, or pen card, other card, we encourage to provide in the form of soft copy only. We don't insist for hard, hard copy or hard document. And all the processing is done online only. Even a borrower who has filed the application can view online the status of the application also. And in addition to that, recently we have been introduced digital docu documentation that is unique in the industry that uh, once the loan is sanctioned for the documentation, you don't have to visit the bank branch. Uh, we'll be sharing the links and we have tie up with any ACL through which you can document, uh, documents can be educated uh, by sitting at your office or your, at your home. You don't have to go to the branch carrying the stamp paper to execute uh, documentation, which, be, which was a difficult task earlier. That become very much smooth. And uh, disbursement, even the disbursement request, we don't insist for giving a letter or something. We accept all the mail communications and all the payments we made is digitally so that we transfer the amount to your supplier or to you as per your requirement so this uh, so at the end i just want to inform in this year we have totally met uh, digitalized our loan platform to msmes Uh, sir, this is our portal, www.sidbi.in. It's a beautiful portal. Uh, this uh, uh, portal clearly mentions about the different schemes or products Sidbi has for the MSME. Uh, these are the examples of three, four schemes I have given. So here in this portal, you, you will be able to know what are the schemes available with the Sidbi, uh, what is the objective of the scheme, who are eligible under the scheme, what is the minimum loan can be sanctioned, what is the maximum loan can be sanctioned, and what is the rate of interest applicable. Any MSME who want to avail any financial assistance, they just have to go through our portal and browse these pages and go through the scheme so they, they can identify it, which scheme is best suited to them. Once they find their best suited scheme, then they can file online application with us. Uh, this is the portal for filing the online application. On uh, the right side, you can see the link, arch, uh, hyperlink arch online application. It's a very much simple uh, online application where you can fill the online application in 10 to 15 minutes and digitally sign using the Aadhaar OTP and that ultimately flow to the branch that reaches to us and we start processing the application. Uh, these, are our, uh, these are our flagship schemes of Sidbi, sir. Uh, these are one of the best schemes it is available in the industry or in for the MSME funding. 
uh, one is a fit based express loan scheme uh, recently uh, sir only our uh, general manager only told that we are sanctioning or making disbursement on the same day this is the uniqueness of the scheme another is end to end energy efficiency scheme we call it 4e scheme here the rate of interest is very much attractive hardly the rate of interest is 7.8 to 7.9% so that is very much cheaper for MSAB, you will not get this type of rate across, uh, from any bank or NBFC at present. Another is eGPS, this is the specifically de a specially designed scheme for rooftop solar and high end energy efficiency machines. In addition to that, we do uh, project funding and working capital also. I will be giving the brief in details of the scheme in brief. Ah, sir, this is the fit best scheme. Under this scheme, we finance uh, machinery up to 1 crore. In a, in, we can do the sanctioning, disbursement and documentation on the same day. Once you file the application using bank statement, IT uh, using the IT returns and GST number, then you will be intimate, uh, will be intimating you the sanction or not we manually, but the system will be intimating you the sanction in just 10 minutes. The highlight of the scheme is the uh, maximum loan up to 1 crore, repayment is up to 5 years and the rate of interest is very much attractive. Here we do 100% of financing but against that you have to keep FD of 22, uh, 25 to 30 percent as collateral. So this is the uh, alert you get. Once you file the application, within the 10 minutes, we will be getting the alert like it's a system generated alert only. That says what is the quantum of loan sanctioned to you and at what rate of interest, what is the processing fee or upfront fee and what are the additional documents in case you need to furnish to us. In addition to that, many of here are of existing CB customer. So under the scheme, okay. regularly we send alert to our existing customers uh, every week so that they can get the benefit. Okay. Even he, in this product, uh, under this 10 minute sanction scheme also, uh, we uh, uh, for our existing customer who have a uh, track record of more than two years with us, we also <coughs> insist for lower amount of FD that is up to only margin of 20 percent or FD of 20 percent. Uh, sir, this is one of our scheme. Machinery up to 7.5 crore. Any machine or combination of uh, machine 5 to 10 machine costing up to 7.5 crore, you can avail 100% finance under the scheme. And uniqueness of the scheme is that the rate of interest is very, very uh, uh, at nominal. The rate of interest is around 7.8 to 8%, but 90% of the uh, proposals we do, rate of interest come uh, 7.8, 7.9. It, it don't even reach 8%. Here the upfront fee is also 0.5% uh, and here uh, for us also it's a convenience for processing note pro for our thing, the process is, processing note is only for the two pager processing note. So in the, uh, if you file today application, the very much next day under this scheme we can sanction you. The loan. Uh, this is uh, uh, up to 1 crore if uh, any unit want to put, uh, put a rooftop uh, solar plant for captive use, then under this scheme they can avail. Here also the rate of interest is very much attractive, it's less than 8% and we allow tenure up to 5 years. Uh, and and uh, recently also we have started, we, uh, we are also not insisting for uh, upfront fee under this scheme. Uh, sir, this is a green finance, uh, a unique uh, product of CB. For example, any uh, MSCB unit or any contractor uh, is taking the work of uh, like municipality street light or any uh, solar project that to be put on a railway station, then normally banks don't get the security. Uh, in those projects where uh, uh, getting the security is difficult or realizing security is difficult, then under green finance we fund. Even the quantum is on higher side up to 20 crore we fund. Fund for the solar and this LED light project. Uh, sir, this is one of our beautiful pro products, specially crafted for women entrepreneurs. This is Arjuna scheme, where in case uh, in a MSM unit where uh, women's shareholding is more than 51%, then we provide funds in a concessional rate. Even the uh, upfront fee we charge is half of what we generally charge. Even in case we are covering the proposal under CGTMC, then 50% of the CGTMC charges should be paid. 
so it's a beautiful product to uh, increase the entrepreneurship among the women. This product has been developed by Citizen. Uh, this is one of the products of SAP for the STSP uh, community. Also, we are supporting, we are charging lower rate of interest. In addition to that, upfront fee also half we are charging, and CGT also 50% uh, of the CGT fee also we are entering for the STSC promoters. In addition to that, we are doing under our Stapan scheme, we will be doing any uh, new entrepreneur coming for a greenfield project by setting up, uh, by acquiring land, uh, constructing building, or uh, want to acquire plant and min um, machinery at a setup uh, unit, then under uh, this Stapan scheme, we can provide assistance up to 20 crores. And this is the ARI scheme, any existing unit, uh, want for an additional unit or want to acquire planter, planter machinery of higher cost, under, under this ARI scheme, we will be providing assistance up to 80% of the project cost. That is only promoter contribution is only 20%, even the rate of interest are very much attractive compared to other banks and NBMC. Uh, in addition to that, SIDB uh, is also a part of CGT MSC or SIDB uh, promotes CGT MSC. Uh, recently, the limit for CGT MSC credit also increased. Uh, initially, it was 2 crore, now it has been increased to uh, 5 crore. Even the charges which used to be around 2% of the loan amount, that, that has been drastically reduced from 0.37 to 0.13%. Uh, sir, I am and my team is based in Pinya, uh, Pinya Industrial Area. We have a very energetic team. In case you need any financial assistance or any support from us, we are always uh, uh, there to help you out. Uh, so this is my number I have given. You can store my number or my team's number. Any query you want related to finance or any related to MSCB, you can uh, call us. If it's possible on our part, even if it's financing or anything, we'll always there to help you out. Thank you. And anything you want to ask, anything, I'm there, sir. <coughs> uh, sir, madam, any scheme or anything you want to know about, more about the I have presented or any doubt, anything you could not get, so that I... Uh, yes, sir, I can share it. I will share it. Yes, sir, I will be sending you, sir. Okay. Uh, sir, there is no specific criteria for CGTMAC. Anybody can avail the CGTMAC. Uh, but when banks feel that they, in the proposal there is some risky attach, then they can avail CGTMAC cover for that. It's like a uh, insurance of a loan. So initially the premium was about 2% including GST but now it has reduced drastically. Sir. So, so what, is, what are the criteria considered to, I mean, we have some criteria sir. No sir, see, for, this CGTMC cover is just an insurance cover type of thing. Loan sanctioning is looks after by banks. So banks look after the promoter's strength, what is the strength of the promoter, what is the experience uh, and what is the strength of, of the project. That they look and sanction. Once the loan is sanctioned, then covering CGTMC is not an issue, sir. Uh, proper, uh, only those proposals we cover CGTMC where we think that promoter is a bit weak, uh, there is not much experience or uh, there are much challenge in the industry, then only we will uh, cover CGTMC. Otherwise, we don't give extra burden to any promoter uh, by paying charges to CGTMC. Thank you. Hello. Under this Thapan, if you want to set a new unit, uh, like when you are taking a KIDV land and you want to construct a building and you want to put planted machinery, then whole thing we can fund under this scheme, sir, under this Thapan. I would like to set up my food processing unit on our own land. Yes, sir. Buy the land and set up the industry. I have already set it on ISR okay. for processing and yes, sir, we can do. Sir, only one thing we have to ensure that the land on which you, your unit is coming should be industrial converted land. It should be. 
Hello. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm very much uh, thankful that uh, uh, Sibi. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I have already taken your uh, under RI scheme and it is very fast online and uh, on behalf of all our uh, small scale industry, I am thanking you for the Sibi for doing a very faster work. There is no personal touch directly online. We have got, uh, got sanctioned about uh, 2.11 in crores and uh, every documentation is online. I am very much happy and there is no personal touch neither uh, uh, after machine comes, nothing is like that. Very, very beautiful scheme. Only thing now about this uh, solar rooftop, what is the rate of interest for that and what is the limit? Sir, uh, we under this scheme, under this EGPS scheme, sir, you can avail as well up to 1 crore and even the rate of interest are below 8 only, in between 7.8 to 8 percent. Normally, the rate of interest comes 7.8, 7.9, sir, for 5 years. One more thing I wanted to just ask you that uh, about the industrial <coughs> policy, new industrial policy, the scheme that about uh, that 5.5 percent scheme is available for any commercial bank as well as KSFC. But only KSFC is doing, why your CB cannot take this? Uh, it will be a really beautiful scheme because uh, your rate of interest is already uh, 8, 8 to 9 percent. If you reduce that another 5 percent, you come to 3 percent. All our people will be benefited. And uh, KSFC, there are a lot of documentation and a lot of practical problems are there. So please look into that. Definitely, sir. Yeah. We Thank you. Uh, noted we will definitely take up this issue with our seniors, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Sir, for importing now, sir, are giving the loans? Importing machineries? Hi, yes, sir. It may be domestic or it. Question, sir. 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 Question, for importing the machinery also giving loans? Yes sir, uh, domestic machine or imported machine, we import both, we give, this. there is no change in the right, yeah. Okay. For importing also the rate of interest is the same? Ah, same sir, same yeah. sir. So, there is no difference sir. Only we will take a diligence report of that supplier because we will be not doing so, we will be taking a DNB report or something that costs around 4 to 5 thousand. Okay. That is only extra, otherwise there is no difference between imported machines and domestic machines. Sir. What is the tenure for that one? Uh, tenure, sir, you can uh, uh, take for five years. If you want, if you take higher quantum, more than two crores or three crores, then you can go up to seven years also. The rate of interest? Rate of interest, sir, if you go under this uh, 4E scheme, then the rate of interest will be between uh, 7 to 8 percent, but normally the rate of interest comes around 7.8, 7.9. 90 percent of our customers fall under this bracket uh, rate of interest. Okay, sir. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Mashinkar here. What are the parameters for hospitals now? Uh, hospital loans, sir, there is actually uh, some criteria uh, bank has given. Bank is asking for collateral actually for that. There is some collateral guidelines is there for post For nursing rooms or any equipment or like anything you are doing? Uh, for equipment, there is no collateral required. In case you are uh, constructing a uh, hospital building and making the setup, then only collateral required. But when you are purchasing machines up to 7.5 crore, there is no requirement for it. Under this scheme, we can fund. Machinery scheme, we can fund it, sir. Thank you. Hello, sir. Gopal Krishna. Sir, tender incremental in Kortira, sir. Sir, I think you can't. Hindi or English, sir. Exactly, what is a tender mail? Only equipment, machinery, and a whole thing. And case to case basis, even work. Plus, I get my supply market today. Almost a lot of college school or gallery desk over there. So, tender over the TV, tender over there, and we have two crores of three crores, half Hundred percent of the fifty percent of the payment because of that. The bank only has the business. In the working capital in the bank, only. Yes, working capital. Yes, 
session to sanjit patil we are welcome you sir so i request sanjit patil to address on intervention of threats in transforming msme ecosystem sanjit patil is a regional head south business development rxil Hi, uh, good morning all. Uh, I am Sanjeev and uh, I am representing RxIL uh, for South region and I take care of Akaraka region also. So, I will give you a brief about uh, who is the RxIL and uh, what is the place. So, RxIL is uh, promoted by uh, CDB, NSA, uh, SBI, ICICI and the yes Bank. So, these five promoters are there for RxIL. And uh, trades, uh, uh, this is nothing, it's called uh, trade uh, perceivable e discounting system. So it is a digital platform where you can uh, have your receivables uh, within 45 days. I mean, you get a, you, as, as per MSME Act, you will have a 45 days trade period to your buyer, which you supply raw material to a buyer. We enable them to get a payment on uh, uh, after your GRN uh, will happen in uh, corporate. So let's say, Assume seven days it generally takes to have a GRN. So we enable payment uh, through trades platform uh, within seven days. And uh, uh, you should not wait for a trade period to get the payment from the buyer. So I'll give you a brief about uh, how it functions, uh, what is the problem area in terms of MSME, where MSME is lacking and where we are supporting to our MSME through trades program. Uh, if you see that uh, uh, the slide, uh, in our economy, uh, around 11 uh, crore jobs, 11 plus crore jobs, is generated by uh, MSME. 29%, uh, almost now it's a 33%, is a GDP contribution, like an Indian GDP contribution from uh, MSME. So it's a very significant, uh, in terms of you know, uh, GDP contribution from, from uh, MSME <laughs> sector. And uh, export also, 45% uh, uh, of total 
export is contributed by MSME. So there's a lot of you know, a significant value uh, chain for MSME. And there's a lot of uh, scheme as also provided by government of India. Uh, one is leading by uh, SIDB, SIDB because SIDB predominantly handle uh, MSME financing. So if you see that uh, MSME, what is the problem area for MSME? So customer base and then payment cycle. So uh, there's a lot of delay payment from the corporate. Uh, generally, they, they have to pay as per act. They have to pay uh, within 45 days, but uh, we are seeing that there's a lot of delays payment from PSU to a supplier or a large corporate to a supplier. They are paying beyond 45 days, and that's create a problem in terms of uh, you know liquidity for uh, MSME. Uh, our role is our role is to facilitate those transactions, and you get a receivables within you know seven days or five days. So we will help you out in terms of receivables. And uh, there is no collateral, there is no uh, guarantee required. It is only a GST invoice required uh, which can be uploaded by you or uh, buyer. And uh, counter approval is required, then you will get a payment within for seven days. So these are the efforts taken by the government of India to uh, for, a, for a whatever MSME is getting a problem. So if you see that 2006 MSME Act actually has come into the picture and they have defined that MSME has to get a payment uh, within 45 days. Uh, that is a micro and a small. And 2012, then again government firms has audited accounts must be, you know, disclose MSME payable. So on the large corporate, in a balance sheet, they disclose what is a deferred payment uh, in terms of, uh, you know, to MSME. So they have to disclose as per, uh, as per act. Then MSME uh, Samadhan set up uh, to the of mechanism where you find it difficult to get a payment. You can you can address your problem in uh, in a samadhan portal. Then the RBI norms this 2015 uh, in principle we got a license to set up a, you know this platform and from RBI and uh, 2017 we got a uh, final approval uh, that is a commencement of business to begin with uh, uh, that you know trades portal. So we have started our journey in 2017. Uh, now we are more than six year old. Uh, in, in system and close to uh, 50,000 crore we have dispersed in the last six months. So now that number of you know uh, transaction is also increasing, number of participation is also increasing. Close to 17,000 vendors we have registered in our portal and it is across India, uh, mostly from tier 2 and tier 3 city and uh, all PSU are mandated from government to do a, you know this discounting system for their supplier. So, in Bangalore, we have a BHL, BML, HAL, BL, all are you know uh, active in our portal, and their supplier is actually getting a benefit in terms of you know getting a receivables within uh, uh, seven days or eight days after GRM. So they, they will not wait for body days, they get the receivables uh, within seven days. Uh, this is a background about the trades. Uh, uh, why trades has got you know uh, uh, got a license. RBI, why uh, RBI has uh, set up this, uh, what was the uh, thought process uh, from the RBI side to set up this you know, platform? Uh, because uh, MSME are actually, if you see the data, uh, there is a 10,000, uh, 2022 data, uh, there are delayed payment to MSME is 10.7 lakhs crore. So it is a very significant value in terms of delayed payment. So RBI uh, set up this you know, uh, discounting process so that the delayed payment can be redressed uh, through this platform. So, uh, and uh, the uh, government of India is also supporting us uh, in terms of uh, mandating PSU to have a transaction and uh, uh, DP uh, department, uh, department of private enterprises are actually getting a, taking a review from the PSU how much transaction they have done, uh, monthly basis, annual basis. So this is a good significant value addition in terms of MSMA. Uh, MSME, I, was, uh, I already mentioned that the 33% three, of you know, GDP is contributed by MSME. Uh, the problem area for MSME is uh, small business struggle to receive their payment. So uh, most of the most of you probably uh, would have a witness that uh, you are not receiving payment from the corporate, large corporate. I mean, your PO term says that 45 days probably you are getting payment on 60 day or 70 days or 90 days as and when uh, you call them they will pay you. So this is a very significant uh, 
our problem area is for MSME and we, where we are actually helping them to get the payment. So, about RxL, which I have already mentioned, that uh, RxL uh, uh, promoter is a SIDB, uh, NSC, SBI, ICICI, India's Bank. These five large institutions uh, has uh, promoted this company and largest stakeholder is ICICI. Uh, what is the trades? Uh, uh, trades is actually, uh, if you see, there, there are three key participants is there in trades, uh, like a buyer, uh, supplier, and the financiers. So, uh, how it works, so the, when suppliers supply material to a large corporate, uh, you, I mean, as a supplier, you upload invoices in the portal, and uh, the same invoices can be approved by a buyer. So these are the digital, so there is no paperwork is involved. So whatever GST certificate you have, GST invoice you have, we upload those GST invoice in portal. And the same uh, invoices will be visible for a buyer. He will approve it. Uh, if any dispute is there in terms of, you know, uh, uh, on, the, on the material, uh, he will deduct the money and again it will come to you for approval. Once you approve that, uh, then after that, you know, banks and FIS uh, financiers, be we'll able to see that invoices and they will start quoting the interest rate. So RxL is nothing, it is a marketplace. Uh, uh, it gives all the banks to participate uh, in for one invoices. And believe me, there are banks fights for invoices in terms of interest rate and all. See, it goes beyond, I mean, uh, if it is a uh, good corporate, if it is a triple A road corporate, you are supplying material, then rates uh, goes to a repo rate also. And current repo rate is a six and a half. So that goes, that goes six and a half also in some of the corporates, if the bill is there. So uh, there are buyer, seller and the platform. So we, we are the aggregator, we, we, uh, all three participants will be linkage in a, a platform. Uh, once you supply material, buyer will approve, then banker will bid. You need to accept that lowest interest rate which, which is available in the, in the platform. Once you accept that interest rate in the platform, our role is to fund uh, uh, fund supplier account in t plus 1 so so you will get the money on t plus 1 so suppose if anything everything is happened today tomorrow you will get a payment before 5 o'clock and uh, there is a uh, there is a very very important and significant uh, you know value chain is there for this is uh, there is no recourse to a supplier so once you receive the payment through platform you will be out of the transaction so there is if suppose tomorrow a buyer fails to pay to the bank on a due day uh, banks will not come to you for uh, you know uh, payment and all because there is no uh, there is uh, no recourse to a supplier. So this is a cycle like a, a seller uh, you provide goods to a buyer and then you upload invoice uh, in the portal buyers approve it then uh, financier will pay it. So this is a cycle uh, in terms of buyer seller and uh, uh, banks. Uh, this is a this is a link. Uh, uh, this is a product. So we have a uh, different different types of product in the portal. Uh, we have a product called factoring where all the cost will be bared by a supplier. Uh, we have a one more product that called reverse factoring, where buyer can also you know uh, 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 buyer can also have a you know they can bear the interest on the behalf of supplier and they will pay you through this platform. This is the workflow, so which I was talking about the uh, buyer or supplier will upload invoices in the platform. So if you see that that workflow, uh, that MSME vendor uh, will upload invoice and uh, the same invoice will go to a buyer for approval. So once he will approve, then that uh, the file will go to a financier and uh, he, will, he will bid on the best of the interest rate and then it will go to you for acceptance of uh, interest rate. So if, if you say that you want to accept, let's say, 7% and let's say interest rate is 7.1%, so you will wait for to get that payment like a bidding of 7%. So once you have, a, like a, you can also set a milestone that I want a payment in terms of, you know, this uh, this uh, supply is a 7.5%. So uh, the banks will start quoting it. Is, it is goes beyond 7 o'clock or 7.30 or 8 o'clock because settlement time is at 9 o'clock. So the bidding will start from 10 o'clock morning. It goes to 8 o'clock evening. So before 9 o'clock, once you accept those bids in the you know, platform, uh, that uh, you will get the payment at T plus 1. 
and this all the payment and and a credit debit happen through NACH mandate. So there is no manual uh, you know uh, transaction is involved in this platform. So every payment from banks to a supplier it goes through NPCL and from due date that collection uh, from buyer to a bank it again goes through from NPCL. So there is a factoring the process flow uh, where interest borne by a supplier uh, like you upload the similar you know uh, kind of you no know, uh, workflow is there where you upload invoice buyer will approve it and uh, they will not approve unless until GRN happen in their system because the quality and quantity check has to be happened from the buyer once it happens they will approve uh, on the same day or next day you will also get a you know a notification from the platform that uh, that these invoices has got you know approved from the buyer and now that bank start quoting the interest rate they will also get a notification that which bank has quoted what interest rate <coughs> so this is the workflow um, uh, they have divided into uh, seven part uh, like a buyer upload invoice uh, uh, buyer sorry uh, seller upload invoice buyer accept invoice then the financier will start quoting that interest rate and supplier accept the bid which is the lowest interest rate then the uh, next stage is the financial disbursed fund to a seller and the sixth stage is the seller receive the fund in within uh, 48 hours of uh, acceptance of you know a bid then next is the pay financial to a little buyer pay financial on a due date so let's say you have a 45 day on uh, 45th day that by your buyer will uh, pay to a bank and then this transaction the whole transaction will get completed Both, uh, both can, I mean, either buyer or supplier. So, whatever arrangement, because different different buyers will have a different different arrangement. So, both option is there. Uh, if buyer say, and uh, if buyer say 50% vendor, I'll pay the interest. Buyer will pay, and buyer say 50% interest will be paid by a supplier. That supplier can do. So, both options are available in the platform. Buyer says no. Sorry, if the buyer says if I don't accept the interest, where do we stand as a seller? So there's a two options there. Either buyer can uh, bear the interest or the supplier can also bear the interest. So either way, they have to, uh, they will, you know, uh, they will tell you which product they want to do with you. It is an individual option. Yeah, it is an individual and, and it is a buyer call. One more question, sir. This is available for the service sector also? Yes. Okay, thank you. So all MSME, including um, micro, small, and medium. Okay, thank you. But uh, your uh, material has to reach. Uh, I mean, your material, but like a supply has to happen on a large quantity or mid sized quantity. So if you are if you are selling this material from MSME to MSME, then probably this will not help. If you are supplying material to large corporate, uh, probably this will help you. Uh, that will look out for by banks and uh, the corporate. So the, the if suppose corporate has availed this facility and a due date he has failed to pay uh, to a banks, then bank has a right to reports on a SMA reporting and all. Uh, point sorry, can you? See now what happens is uh, when we upload as a uh, seller mm -hmm. our invoices, buyer will not approve for 90 days. And you don't have any control on the, the buyer. You say when he approves, then only we'll pay. Yes. It never works because you don't have any control on that. Both three, and that we cannot approach the buyer because of you. They are taking you as a shield, hmm. uh, like uh, not entertaining us. And we are not. This is not helping the SME. This is, in fact, it is troubling the SME, and we are facing that. So, which uh, corporate you are facing this issue? Aditya. Aditya means Birla? No, not Birla. Aditya are Persian groups. We are fixed. Because they, they, they never upload invoices up to 90 days and 45 days agreement, whatever. Before 40, if I take instantly, then that 45 days interest is charged on me, right? right? Beyond 45 days, 45th day you will have to pay us. Yes. And beyond 45 days, whatever. They delay and pay you, that interest will be charged charge to them, and they, that is that is understood. Correct. But it never happens below 90 days. You have any mechanism, like complaining to the MSME, 
or look so data whatever data is you know uh, we are receiving in terms of let's say uh, uploading invoice or a scale invoice you can say beyond 100 days beyond 90 days each invoice has they have to give a justification why it is a get delayed because as per msme act that the your invoice like a uh, small and a micro uh, category uh, vendor it has to pay within 45 days Everyone says that, including ministry and officers, all this. Is there any one case somebody penalized because of this? Look, for this platform, we don't allow uh, stale invoices to upload. No, but who is? Is there any mechanism? No, you, you are taking care, he is uploading invoices after 40 days or 45 days. Like, I cannot complain on my buyer. I cannot go to the court on my buyer because I need business, from hmm. business. Hmm. The, uh, government has made mechanism and you people are coming as a agency of uh, government and helping the MSME what's, what you claim. But it's not really helping. No? Like when he delays beyond 45 days, he is unable to pay us. He is unable to. If there is a rejection, I accept. If there is not, not a rejection, that interest has to be paid by Yeah, so then you need to you need to stand for stand firm because uh, because you as a MSME you have a right to report this uh, in MSME forum. Then what is the use of paying? Look, so we, we are helping. I go, to the, I go to the court. Okay. Then what are the mechanisms helping us? When I go to the court, I fight. I then these like you say, 45 days he cannot delay. Your RXI and has to take that. So that's why we are not allowing like any yeah. any stale cases to upload here. Like so let's say example. Uh, Sanjit, uh, yeah. I would like to add. Uh, yeah. uh, so sir, basically this is a buy and run market. And even the platform also it's a buy and run. It is a discretion of the buyer only. We can get the MSME and transaction can be flow through the system. And your point is valid and the system is evolving. So now you are talking about 15,000 crore worth of transaction passed through the system. But when we started this initiative, uh, even the MSME themselves were not keen to come on the platform, stating the similar reason. Because if buyer is not decided to do a transaction on the platform, even MSME gets registered on the platform, there is of no use. I think the point you have raised, we have taken up with the Ministry of Corporate Affairs uh, probably a couple of years back, uh, stating that so they already issued a mandate to all the corporate companies which are having turnover of beyond 500 crore mandatory to be on the platform. That is, I think almost 90% of the companies have registered. But out of which, not even 10 to 15 corporates are using the flat. We requested them, sir, please mandate them. They have to route all the MSME payments mandatory through the platform so that we can ensure the MSME gets paid within 48 days from the goods acceptance date. For which, what they have said, uh, so that will be very difficult because each and every company has their own uh, no mechanism for managing vendor payments. And moreover, the corporates which we talk about, even their payments get delayed from government themselves. So it is the chain. So it is very difficult to you know, push everyone to come on the platform, but we are making efforts and the point which you raised, we have also highlighted in various forums. But we are trying to you know, take this to the next level gradually, but it is picking up progressively. So the point is noted, I think this we need to once again highlight to the higher authorities. I think uh, Kasha President has to address the like uh, every bank has got like uh, uh, when they sub you submit every uh, so, uh, month statement. Now what happened? No, now last uh, when I met in uh, MSMED department, there is a uh, ramp uh, SIP presentation was there, evaluation meeting. That time uh, two states, uh, one is Orissa, other one is Goa. They ma made it mandatory to the ASUs to come into the portal. So, MSME department is trying to convince all the states to make it mandatory. This one is the, our buyers should come to the portal. Moment that becomes mandatory, you know, all state places will compulsory, they should come in. Either they have to reject the invoice or they have to accept it. That, uh, they are now requesting the states to make it mandatory. Uh, we suggested them, why can't you make national, say, like central government can make it mandatory, you know, all places and all, they are working on that. What they say within a month or two, MSAFC MSA and Trade Portals, they are making a major changes in that. I think these issues may be handled in that. I think we are giving uh, like statements every month, back to the bank, like outstanding. And uh, the similar way, buyers are also giving. 
when uh, their statement says this this much has to be paid to the vendor and beyond 45 days, beyond 60 days, that has to be mechanized by the MSME to address the issues. Sir, now it is very clear that beyond 45 days outstanding is there means that expenses is disallowed. The problem here is that GR and date they are getting. Uh, that is the mechanism where the BSU is accepting the material late and uh, escaping this uh, 45 days payment. That is lot of changes they are planning and that's 45 days. If the expenses are compulsory disallowed, then definitely all the buyers will pay within 45 days. That is what they are looking at. Just to add, sir, sir. <coughs> your registered which platform, sir? Your registered which platform? There are three threads in the RX around it. So the customer is Aditya Registration. Thank you, sir. And which buyer are you supplying, sir? I'll give you it. So this is. Uh, what he is pointing out is that a reverse factor in the normal factory. This normal factory is more ideal for the MSME, wherein we can upload our invoice. Correct. Whereas in case of reverse, they will upload on our behalf, on seller and MSME behalf. There we fail. Because normally they take 45 days to upload, or maybe 50 loads, 50 days, sorry. Then they will also charge whatever the charges come, they put it on our head. This is what happening. No big companies, I mean, and can go there. Sell, I'm talking of the buyer, not interested in normal factor. In the normal factor, maybe hardly, I don't know how many of them are on the normal factor and how many of them are reverse factor. Most of the MSMEs are on the reverse factor. They upload on our behalf. That doesn't work out. Again, the same thing. It may take 55 days, as my friend said, you can't go to the court. Can't go in so, it is a so here we will have to encourage only normal factor for the MSME. Then it may help us because I am going to talk. However, as the president said, the GRN takes one month. <laughs> <laughs> then definitely <laughs> see another way of getting escaped. So, so however, this has to be tightened. I mean, these laws and the rules, regulations should be altered, redefined by the RBI, the trust maker. Otherwise, it's just going to be on the paper, only as you said, some public sector mail. But everyone is not applying to public sector. There are a lot of MSMEs who deal among the private sector. Yeah, so we, uh, I'll give you the brief about the business. Uh, we are doing some close to 3,500 crore monthly roughly business. Uh, 90% from the mind from the service sector. Yeah, 90% business. Software and all. No, no, software there is no software because software generally they purchase or they export more like a software from uh, like export and all. Locally they don't have a purchase on the service sector. Mostly are manufacturing only auto, auto EMs and infra are the larger contributor in terms of you know. Whatever what town the dealers they also come under MSME. Can they register distributors? Dealer, if you if you are. Can they register under uh, threads? You can register as a supplier if you no, are a dealer. Say, I am I'm not a manufacturer, I am a distributor. Yeah, but you can. As per the category, I can register myself yeah, but as an MSME. Can I participate in RX? I mean. Uh, yes, if you are a dealer and you are supplying material to, let's say, Tata Motor example. Yeah. So you can. Uh, you can I am uh, buying from somebody and then supplying to Tata. I am not a manufacturer. Yeah, it's a trader. A trader. I, trade, it's yeah. kind of trading, uh, like yes. you are trading activity. You are buying material. You are refurbishing that material and you are supplying material to a Tata, uh -huh. Tata Motor or is a XYZ large corporate. Yeah. You can avail. Traders can. Yeah, traders, traders is now it's, it's allowed uh, for you know MSME act now. I mean, this amendment happened last year, last two last year, yeah. and now trader can be also participate as a as a supplier. So yeah, only one point. Maybe I mean, are you connected with the CGTMSC? Is it been extended to uh, distributor dealers? I mean, new category of the MSME. I just wanted to ask from the... CGTMS, yeah, I will be not aware. So, so the CGTMS extended to them, <laughs> then what is the fund? We don't get anything in the sector. I mean, manufacturing sector rather. If you are giving it to a dealer, distributor and professionals, then what is the total allocation of 10,000 crore? Nothing. We'll, we get nothing. Uh, manufacturers. Thank you. And... Uh, Sagar sir, what happens now in the Harbe Import Committee also? Uh, what they say? Uh, 
SME finance, that means inclusive of trader, they say. We ask for the breakup. What is given to manufacturers and service sector in MSME? That breakup is not there. We are requested the RBI board to have that data. Otherwise, priority sector lending to the now becomes to the traders also. MSME situation never improves. Uh, financing to the traders, the targets are reached by the bank. This we openly told in the import committee meeting and asked for the data, separate data for MSME members. Sir, one more question. I am Ramakrishna. See, uh, few of the companies, uh, they have put already in a VFX scheme, vendor finance scheme to us. Whether this RXIL, how is going to help us? So VFX is a uh, conventional program for banks. Um, they are running from ages. I mean, it is not like a new program. It is a 20, 30 year old program. This is this corporate is running yeah. for non MSME or MSME mix. So this trades has actually designed for MSME only. Uh, there is non MSME cannot participate for this program. So if you are in let's say a VFX program for any corporate and you want to move from VFX program to a trades. Uh, it can be doable. No, no. We can refuse their uh, VFS scheme and ask uh, yeah. RXL scheme to yes, uh, yes, yes. organizations who yes, are yes. already running and registered. Yes, yes, yes. We can do that. But they have to be agreed. Yeah, they have to be agreed. Generally, they agree because uh, ultimately uh, the the supplier has to be the problem whatever supplier has it has to be solved and the second is good point for supplier is that interest rate is not defined in the vfx model uh, which you are talking about it is a fixed interest rate yes. here is a marketplace so every time you will you will have a price discovery so probably today you are getting seven percent tomorrow might be you will get six point seven five percent it is a price of discovery so it is not fixed so it is a good part of in terms of you know rate, rate of interest uh, you know reduction from the banks Generally, convention program, which I have seen in the last seven, six, seven years, convention program VFX is actually, uh, there's a lo lot of cost is also involved for that product, for, you know, product. and here uh, there is no cost involved from the bank. So bank, probably they will be sitting in a, you know, Bombay and they will be uh, only quoting that the interest rate whenever the bills are available. But uh, in VFX program, uh, there is a lot, lot of operational cost involved from the bank side. So if you see that uh, difference from VFX program and trade, I can 100% uh, assure you that it will be around 1% less than uh, uh, VFX program, the trade interest rate I'm talking about. Okay. See, if you are only considering, if you are considering <coughs> trading also under uh, manufacturing, so that if you are indirectly supporting the imports, in what way it is going to support the, uh, the intention of uh, becoming like in India? And uh, they are trying to grow. So though the scope has been expanded, but see, mm -hmm. no way it is, this is not facilitated in uh, MSME. Mm -hmm. and, uh, in no way it is but the ultimately the problem for uh, MSME is the receivables. We are totally, we are, uh, 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 the larger uh, corporate uh, people are uh, indirectly banking on small scale MSMEs uh, for their uh, activities. Some way the government should think over to reduce this particular activity. But, uh, see, most of the things, you know, what are the schemes? is actually no way it is supporting MSME. But some MSME is totally stuck with the receivables. And again we are stuck in between banks and their uh, ratio requirement and everything will not get us uh, funding. Funding. Something should be thought. You know? I agree sir. The, so well thought what have you said. But the scope has been, though the scope has been expanded, uh, including traders in the MSME scope, I think it is not taken up uh, fully. But again, the CB role is very limited as a financial institution. I think probably I think to be taken up by the government and uh, see how the, what are the core benefits of the schemes uh, being launched, introduced by government, it should reach the MSME ecosystem. Sir, one minute. How many 
Chinese we have got benefited under Alex, Vichitambo. Sorry, sorry, sir? How many MSNs got benefited? Yeah, so uh, uh, right now uh, close to 17,000 MSME has already registered. No, uh, not registered, I already benefited from the platform. So out of 17,000, all are, I mean, they have done a transaction, one or two. Uh, 15,000 are, are my regular uh, vendors. Which are in terms of value? Value we have done close to 50,000 crore in six years. Last year alone we have done some 25,200 crore of discounting. Now we are doing month on month 3,600 to 4,000 crore. Our goal is to complete 50,000 alone this year, this financial year. So this is going 100% on a year on year growth. That's good because the reason I asked this question, my friend asked me, asked what is, there is no use and all these things he was mentioning. Just I wanted to highlight what is the figure. Okay. The figure will reflect Correct. why government is making effort Correct. to help the MSME. Correct. That's what I want to highlight. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Patel. I request. Uh, Sri Dabasis Pradhan, AGMCB, Pinya Bangalore office, to come on the dais, please. Dr. Sakratas, you want to move on to some other programs. I request Kasia President to felicitate Dr. Sakratas. Dr. Sakratos, MSME DFO. There is a one more session which explains on ONDC. I request all the participants to present for a few more minutes. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I request uh, CASA President Shashidhar Shetty and Vice President Raj Gopal to felicitate AGM Sidbi Pinya Branch Mr. Devashish Pradhan. I request President and Vice President and other OB to felicitate San, Mr. Sanjeet Patil. Mr. Sanjeet Patil, Regional Head South Business Development, RXIL. The last session is on ONDC. I request Ravi Aldipur, co-founder and chief business officers, E. Samudai, to come on the dais, please.
I request yeah, Nair yeah. Ravi Aldipo. Yeah, please. Yeah, now uh, Mr. Ravi Aldipur, co-founder of and chief business officers, will explain on the policy. He is a Madai. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ravi Haldipur. Uh, nano e samudai and I own the company and no pratinis is the name. E samudai Yambudu, it's a technology company. Uh, now, technology tools, smart type to make it easier for entrepreneurs to create digital businesses. Uh, about three years ago was when we started this company in Bangalore. We did a pilot which is still operational today, local digital company. Nam company Moola Tattwa Yenandre Sanda businesses, local businesses, Bedili Ke Avkasha Yaksita Elandre, Yudoda Doda company, Yudoda Doda platform, technology and no Vashapadis Kondidare. Our technology mele our Hidita Dindagi. Our Sulopadali buyers and no our platform again Akashis Tetare Idrindagi Bharatadali Nama e Sanna Putta stores, what uh, is called as Kirana stores. Our business so Kala Kramena Kami Aktaide Ivatina on the uh, economic environment nodidre. The Indian retail business is at about one. Uh, trillion dollars, one trillion dollars, this is a very big amount, uh, Adrali, Adrali, one the kala dali, on the patay moth was shed hindi, and the platform, so it is a baro modlu, uh, entire e business, so, Sanna putta, Inavina TV, Kirana store, so, Adunats con hokta it. Ega, Last Hadne Dipatwasha, e platforms, Amazon, Flipkart, very, very platforms. So, plus, so e large departmental chains. Yurindagi, Sadarna, Ipat uh, percent e business, our Vashpers Kundidare. Andre, Innuru billion has gone away, twenty percent. Even you heard both the twenty percent of the Rena, you know, eighty percent is there. And if this transition from local businesses to monopolistic platform continues, it will be more than 50% to more than 50 to more than 50 to more than 50 to more than 50 to more Ide one do understanding, or Ide one do insight it kundo. Now we some of start madi do. Adhe one do suru madi one do one do one do aray varsha dalli ONDC. Most on the December 2021 was when ONDC was established as a Section 8 company. Andre not for profit. ONDC pakhe mata dalli ke ONDC tapini di pasta hai. Uh, but I'm just giving you a background so that you can do uh, this samudai ONDC connection in and tell you to call both. But yaw retail in our Nama Pretna no ONDC on the Bedili, you do on the network ONDC are on the platform Allah, uh, are on the tech company Tarala. It is a network, it is enabling buyers, sellers to come onto a platform and it is mostly in and Yella Rithia sellers are 
ಅವರು ಮನೆ ಬಿಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಆಗಲಿ ಅವರು ಇಂಡಿವಿಜುವಲ್ ಪ್ರೊಪ್ರೈಟರ್ ಆಗಲಿ ಅವರು ಸಣ್ಣ ಪುಟ್ಟ ಬಿಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಆಗಲಿ ಏನೇ ಇರಲಿ ಅದರಿಂದ ಓ ಎನ್ ಡಿ ಸಿಯನ್ನು ಉಪಯೋಗಿಸಿಕೊಂಡು ಅವರು ಓ ಎನ್ ಡಿ ಸಿಯನ್ನು ಉಪಯೋಗಿಸಿಕೊಂಡು ಅವರು ಅವರ ಬಿಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಅನ್ನು ಕೇವಲ ಅವರ ಪರಿಸರದಲ್ಲೇ ಅಲ್ಲ ಇಡೀ ಭಾರತದಲ್ಲಿ ಅವರು ಅವ್ರ ಹತ್ರ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಅದೊಂದು ಉತ್ತೇಜನ ಒಂದು ಉಮೇದು ಒಂದು ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಇದ್ರೆ ಇಡೀ ಭಾರತದಲ್ಲಿ ಅವ್ರ ಅವರ ಪ್ರೊಡಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ನು ಮಾಡ್ಬೋದು ಇದು ಹೇಗೆ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಇವತ್ತು ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಸಾಧಾರಣ ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಒಂದು ಪ್ಲಾಟ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಒಂದು ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಇದೆ ಡಿಜಿಟಲ್ ಏನಂಬುದು ಒಂದು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಇದೆ ಒಂದು ಯಾವ ರೀತಿ ಅದು ವರ್ಕ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಒಂದು ಮ್ಯಾಕ್ರೋ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಬಯರ್ಸ್ ಬರ್ತಾರೆ ಆಪ್ ಅಥವಾ ವೆಬ್ಸೈಟ್ ಮೂಲಕ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಇಡ್ತಾರೆ ಆ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಇಟ್ಟು ಕೂಡಲೇ ಆ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಅದು ಯಾವ ಪ್ಲಾಟ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನೀವು ರಿಜಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಆಗಿರ್ತೀರೋ ಅಮೆಝಾನ್ ಆಗಲಿ ಫ್ಲಿಪ್ಕಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಗಲಿ ಮಿಂತ್ರಾ ಆಗಲಿ ಅಥವಾ ಯಾವುದೇ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಸೈಟ್ ಆಗಲಿ ಆ ಸೈಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನೀವು ಒಂದು ಸೆಲ್ಲರ್ ಆಗಿ ರಿಜಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಆಗಿದ್ರೆ ನೀವು ಆ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ಕನ್ಸ್ಯೂಮರ್ ಗ್ರಾಹಕರಾದರೂ ಒಂದು ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ಗೆ ಸರ್ಚ್ ಮಾಡುವಾಗ ಏನೇ ಆಗಲಿ ಬಟ್ಟೆ ಆಗಲಿ ಅಥವಾ ಮನೆ ವಸ್ತು ಆಗಲಿ ಅಥವಾ ಒಂದು ಪೈಪ್ ಆಗಲಿ ಏನೇ ಆಗಲಿ ಹುಡುಕುವಾಗ ದಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ಯಾರೆಲ್ಲ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಅವರು ಆ ಸೆಲ್ಲರ್ಸ್ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಬಯರ್ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರೈಸ್ ನೋಡ್ತಾರೆ ರಿವ್ಯೂ ನೋಡ್ತಾರೆ ರೇಟಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ನೋಡ್ತಾರೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ನೋಡಿ ಅವರು ಸಿಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಎಲ್ಲಿಂದ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಆ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ಖರೀದ ತಗೊಳ್ಬೇಕಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಅದೇ ರೀತಿ ನೀವು ಈಗ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಈಗ ಸಣ್ಣ ಗ್ರಾಹಕರಿಗೆ ಏನಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇದನ್ನ ಎಲ್ಲ ಅಮೆಝಾನ್ ಆಗ್ಲಿ ಫ್ಲಿಪ್ಕಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಗ್ಲಿ ಅವರು ಒಂದು ಅವರದ್ದು ಕಮಿಷನ್ಸ್ ತುಂಬಾ ಇದೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಒಂದು ಪ್ಲಾಟ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನೀವು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಅಂಗಡಿ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ಡಿಜಿಟಲ್ ಸ್ಟೋರ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಪ್ಲಾಟ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನೀವು ಬೇರೆ ಆಗಿಯೇ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಓ ಎನ್ ಡಿ ಸಿ ಆ ರೀತಿ ಅಲ್ಲ ಸೊ ನಮ್ಮ ಕಂಪನಿ ಯಾವ ಏನಂದ್ರೆ ಈ ಸಮುದಾಯ ಏನಂದ್ರೆ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಓ ಎನ್ ಡಿ ಸಿ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಭಾಗವಹಿಸಲು ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಸಹಾಯ ಮಾಡುವಂತ ಕಂಪನಿ ಸೊ ಅವರ್ ಕಂಪನಿ ಈ ಸಮುದಾಯ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಸೆಲರ್ ನೆಟ್ವರ್ಕ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೆಂಟ್ ಸೊ ಈ ಡಿಜಿಟಲ್ ಕಾಮರ್ಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನೀವು ನೋಡಿದ್ರೆ ಸೆಲರ್ಸ್ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಬಯರ್ಸ್ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಮಧ್ಯದಲ್ಲಿ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಮೀಡಿಯರೀಸ್ ಹೂ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿ ಹೂ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಲಾಜಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆಗಲಿ ಇದೇ ಆಗಲಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹೂ ಈ ಪೇಮೆಂಟು ಈಗ ಒಂದು ವಸ್ತು ಒಂದು ಕಡೆಯಿಂದ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಕಡೆ ಹೋಗಬೇಕಿದ್ರೆ ದುಡ್ಡು ಆ ರಿವರ್ಸ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಷನಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋಗಬೇಕು ಹೌದಾ ಸೊ ಗ್ರಾಹಕರು ಒಂದು ಐಟಮ್ ಪರ್ಚೇಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದಾಗ ಎಲ್ಲೇ ಆಗಲಿ ಅವರು ಪೇಮೆಂಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಪ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆಗ್ತದೆ ಶಿಪ್ ಆಗ್ತದೆ ಶಿಪ್ ಆಗಿ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಮುಟ್ತದೆ ಕೆಲವು ದಿವಸ ನಂತರ ಅಥವಾ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಡೇ ಸೇಮ್ ಡೇ ಏನೇ ಆಗಲಿ ಈಗ ನಮ್ಮ ಕಂಪನಿ ಲೋಕಲ್ ಕಾಮರ್ಸ್ ಎಂಬುದನ್ನು ಪ್ರಮೋಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಲೋಕಲ್ ಕಾಮರ್ಸ್ ಇಂದ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ ಏನಂದ್ರೆ ಹತ್ತಿರದಲ್ಲಿ ಇರುವೆ ಇರುವ ಎಲ್ಲ ಮಾರಾಟಗಾರರಾಗಲಿ ಬಿಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಮೆನ್ ಆಗಲಿ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಈಗ ನಾವು ಏನ್ ಒಂದು ಚೇಂಜ್ ನೋಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೇವೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಈಗಿನ ಜನಾಂಗ ಬರುವಂತ ಯುವ ಪೀಳಿಗೆ ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಡಿಜಿಟಲ್ ನೇಟಿವ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಕೈಯಲ್ಲಿ ಬೆಳಿಗ್ಗೆ ಎದ್ದ ಕೂಡಲೇ ಮೊಬೈಲ್ ರಾತ್ರಿ ಮಲ್ಗುವರೆಗೂ ಮೊಬೈಲ್ ಸೊ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಡಿಜಿಟಲ್ ನೇಟಿವ್ಸ್ ಅವರ್ ದ ವೆರಿ ಕಂಫರ್ಟಬಲ್ ವಿತ್ ಮೊಬೈಲ್ ಫೋನ್ಸ್ ಆ ಅದರಿಂದಾಗಿ ಆ ಬದಲಾವಣೆ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಶಾಪ್ ಕನ್ಸ್ಯೂಮರ್ ಬಿಹೇವಿಯರ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಶಾಪಿಂಗ್ ಟ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಈಗ ನೀವು ಯಾವುದೇ ಅಂಗಡಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ನೋಡಿದ್ರು ಸಣ್ಣ ಪುಟ್ಟ ಅಂಗಡಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಗ್
ಅದು ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅದು ಆನ್ಲೈನ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕವರೆಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಅಂತಾರೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಈಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹುಡುಕುದು ಆ ಡಿಸ್ಕವರೆಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಸುಲಭ ಆಗ್ಬಿಟ್ರೆ ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಹಾ ಇವ್ರು ಇದು ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಇವ್ರು ಈ ಊರಲ್ಲಿ ಅವರದೊಂದು ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ಇದೆ ತಿನ್ನುವ ವಸ್ತು ಆಗ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಕೈಗಾರಿಕೆ ವಸ್ತು ಆಗ್ಲಿ ಏನಿದ್ರು ಸೊ ಆ ರೀತಿ ನಾವು ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಅಂಗಡಿ ಎಷ್ಟೇ ದೊಡ್ಡದಾಗ್ಲಿ ಎಷ್ಟೇ ಸಣ್ಣದಾಗ್ಲಿ ಅದು ಮನೆ ಬಿಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಆಗ್ಲಿ ನಿಮ್ಮನ್ನು ನಾವು ಒ ಎನ್ ಡಿ ಸಿಗೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಅನುಗುಣವಾಗಿ ಕೆಲವು ಚಾರ್ಜಸ್ ಇದೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ಆ ಚಾರ್ಜಸ್ ಕಂಪೇರ್ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಬರುವಂತ ಒಂದು ಮುಂದೆ ಹೋಗಿ ಒ ಎನ್ ಡಿ ಸಿ ಬೆಳೆದಾಗೆ ಅವರು ಯು ಪಿ ಐ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಹೇಗೆ ಯು ಪಿ ಐ ಬೆಳೆದದ್ದು ಯು ಪಿ ಐ ಶುರುವಾಗುವಾಗ ಅತಿ ಕಡಿಮೆ ಇತ್ತು ಇವತ್ತು ಯು ಪಿ ಐ ಲಕ್ಷ ಕೋಟಿ ಲಕ್ಷ ಕೋಟಿ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸಾಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಸೊ ಅದೇ ರೀತಿ ಒ ಎನ್ ಡಿ ಸಿ ಬೆಳೆಯೋ ಬಹಳಷ್ಟು ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಇದೆ ಸರ್ಕಾರವು ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ತುಂಬಾ ಎಫರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಇಷ್ಟು ಹೇಳಿ ನಾನು ನನ್ನ ಮಾತು ಬಗ್ಸ್ತೀನಿ ನಂದು ನಾನು ನನ್ನ ಕೊಲೀಗ್ ಕಾರ್ತಿಕ್ ಅವರು ಕಾರ್ತಿಕ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ರೇಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಇಲ್ಲೇ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ನಮ್ದು ಡೆಸ್ಕ್ ಹೊರಗೆ ಇದೆ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಯಾವುದೇ ರೀತಿ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಆಗ್ಲಿ ಒ ಎನ್ ಡಿ ಸಿ ಆಗ್ಲಿ ಈ ಸಮುದಾಯ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಏನೇ ಇದ್ರು ಈ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆದ ನಂತರ ಬಂದು ಮೀಟ್ ಆಗ್ಬೋದು ನಿಮ್ ಕಾರ್ಡ್ ನಿಮ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ಸ್ ಕೊಡಿ ನಾವು ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಒ ಎನ್ ಡಿ ಸಿ ಮೇಲೆ ಎನೇಬಲ್ ಆಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಿಸ್ತೀವಿ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸರ್ now for the session 3 i request mr nitin nayar senior vice president and business at south to just give an awareness session on ondc by thank you respected dignitaries on the dais of the dais uh, good afternoon my name is nitin nayar i am from ondc i am going to take a standard briefing session giving you a very high level idea of what ondc is what our goals are what we are trying to do uh, ravi i think very eloquently in kannada explained most of it uh, but i would take this opportunity to do a quick overall briefing with supporting slides right so what is that ondc is trying to solve you know, what is the change right as ravi explained earlier right e-commerce is a very very real thing you know it's happening all around us right but even today e-commerce penetration at an overall national level of commerce is only about 6 to 7% right and therefore it remains largely a tier 1 phenomenon and compared to other developing countries you know more developed countries you're far behind countries such as south korea china etc have 20 to 25% e-commerce penetration also e-commerce penetration is largely a tier 1 phenomenon as we go to tier 2 tier 3 towns the penetration starts starts to come down and as as you know it 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 is something that you know is still not prevalent and co- commerce remains offline more so in b2b which is business buying from business right it's only about 1 to 1.5% right so these are some of the problem statements that uh, ondc has been set up to solve and we want to bring a step change in e-commerce penetration in india so when you look at e-commerce penetration what are the challenges that ondc endeavors to solve right now if you are a seller right let's look at how do you go online right you typically would set up a website or go to an enabling platform like a shopify or you will go to one of the platforms right typically platforms form largely bulk of where people go online but it is essentially limited choices right and even if you were to go online by shopify or set up your website your big challenge is how do you build demand right how do you build improve discoverability how do you let people know that hey i exist here and this is the product or service that i am trying to sell right also for that you may then go join a platform which improves discoverability but if you go to a platform uh, the terms are largely set by the platform it's a one sided the platform sets the terms it's a take it or leave it conversation there is no opportunity to negotiate no opportunity to customize or do business on your terms and that becomes a challenge right and lastly even if you were to you know go online right there are many aspects of the value chain that still need it's not just that you get an order from order to building your catalog online to getting an order to fulfillment to managing logistics there are several aspects of of the e-commerce business that you will need to build capability all of which are fairly challenging for a small or medium business and it typically sits outside the area of core competence of what your business product or service is right if you are a artisan and if you are a you know where you know uh, foods and vegetables uh, you know company all of these companies don't really have e-commerce capabilities right so these are some of the problem statements that ondc endeavors to solve right 
So how do we intend to do it? Right? There are two concepts we use, unbundling and interoperability. Right? So let's go back to how internet has been envisioned. Right? So internet is an open network. Right? Everybody uses, for example, the HTTP protocol and any website is available to everybody. There is no restriction on you sitting here or somebody in Delhi or somebody in Sri Lanka or somebody in, in Manila, Philippines trying to access a website. Right? Everybody uses a common protocol. Everybody is able to access their information irrespective of which you know, type of systems you use, whether it's a Linux system, Windows system, Apple system, you know, Apple iOS, you will have access to that, right? Now, e-commerce today is a closed ecosystem and that's what we mean by unbundling is we look at the entire platform, right? The platform that you join, it has a buying side and a selling side, right? How do we kind of segregate this and make it two different businesses or unbundle it, right? So if you look at a conventional platform today, the buying application, which is what you as a consumer use, and the selling application, which whichever of your sellers use, are kind of unbundled and segregated into two, logically, right? And then create an ability to operate with each other. When you say operate with each other, currently you are buying and selling on the platform, operate with each other, but create an ability to, inter to or, or interoperate with other buying and selling platforms across uh, the internet, right? So let's take an example, right? So on, on the left side, you see what is... Uh, open protocol based email system, right? All of us use email, uh, uh, SMTV protocol, simple mail transfer protocol. You give me an email ID, I send you an email, it seamlessly reaches you, right? There are no other technical integrations required. We are not going to talk to each other and say, okay, this is my server, this is the IP address, you connect here, this is how you send it. Everything works seamlessly, right? The reason is that we use an open protocol called SMTP, right? ODC's endeavor is to build an open protocol. ODC is building an open protocol for digital commerce, right? What that does is, as a buyer, you are on a buying application, right? In unbundled world, you are on your consumer application, which is able to communicate with not one, but multiple seller applications, right? Which have all onboarded sellers. So as a seller, you have access to buyers from across buying applications, which is not possible today. And as a buyer, you have access to sellers beyond your only your platform and beyond your only app, right? And therefore, it, it fosters an interoperable network, right? Uh, the OpenDC protocol is based on Beckin, which is uh, Beckin protocol, which is uh, built by FIDE, which is a not not for profit promoted by Nandan Pramod Verma, who is the chief architect of Aadhaar, and Sujit Nair. They come together and build the foundation on which ODC protocol is built. Right now, let's look at how this starts to change the world. But for that, I'll go back and and you know bring spotlight. So let's look at any domain. Let's take food, mobility. Where there are one, two, maybe three platforms live. Right. So, so let's take the first platform, platform one. On the left, you see what you are see as a consumer, right? You will search, you'll build a cart, you will pay, right? On the middle, you see what the seller side is. There's catalog to be built. Once you get an order, there is fulfillment to be done. And there is returns, cancellations, etc., which also as a seller, you need to manage. The third is, of course, uh, you know, delivery or logistics, which comes in, you know, if and when there's a product to be sold, it may not be in the case of a service. So three aspects on that, of, of an e-commerce business all being done by platform one, right? Now what is interesting is platform two also does all the three aspects, right? But how do they communicate with each other? They use proprietary internal protocols to talk to their respective. So their buying side, talking to their selling side and their logistic side is all through, you know, Oprah, all through proprietary protocols, which is internal, right? Therefore, what is the problem? The challenge is if you are a buyer on platform one, right you cannot see the sellers on platform two right or if you're seller listed on platform two you cannot see the buyers on platform uh, one right so essentially if you have to be a if you have to buy something you have to be individually registered on both platforms right as a buyer as well as as a seller so that you can do business with each other right and that is where we would probably want to bring a step change now let's look at the ondc world right when we look at after ONDC, I would bring the spotlight to the lower part of the, the slide, right? There is a retail buying application, right? Which is what as a consumer you logged in, right? There is a retail selling application, which is the sellers in you logged in and listed your catalog, your inventory, etc. And there is a logistic application. These three have been now unbundled, right? Segregated, so to say, right? And what is the advantage? They talk to each other on the ONDC protocol. And therefore, now many interesting possibilities start emerging, right? So what does that do? Now, any retail buying application, which is your consumer application, can talk to any retail selling application. And therefore, if you are if you are on one retail buying application, 
you are able to look at sellers registered on any other retail selling application which is you know connected by the ONDC protocol, right? And vice versa. You list on one seller application, right? Like Isabuda is here. Ravi will help you understand how the listing happens, and you put the catalog there and get started. You are visible as long as your, your product or service is being searched. You're visible on every buying application which is compliant to the ONDC protocol, right? And the same thing happens for all the other possibilities, right? So as a retail buying application, you talk to all retail selling and logistics application. As a retail seller applications, which is where you will log in as a seller, you are visible to the retail buying applications across as well as to any logistics player, right? Similarly, the logistics application can take a logistics order both from a retail buying application or from a retail selling application, right? So this is a logical construct of the ONDC network. Consumers come in via the buyer apps, there is A, B and more. Sellers come in via the seller apps, A, B and more. And then logistics come via the logistics app. All interact with each other using the ONDC protocol. So where is ONDC today? Right? This is an important slide I like to highlight. There are 13 buyer applications uh, with potentially 100 million buyers. So as a seller, you must be wondering what's the ecosystem that I will have access to if I am part of the ONDC protocol, ONDC network. You will see some marquee names there, Paytm, you know, Spice Money, Kotak Bank, and PINCODE, which is the phone pay app. We also have 10 logistics applications, right? eCard, Loadshare, Shadowfax, some of the marquee names in the business. And there are 50 seller applications. So totally about, if you look at it, it's about 73 applications that are live. Right? So 50 applications, Isamada is here, many other applications are here, overall collectively onboarding sellers. So all of this is functionally working today uh, across uh, cities in India, right? So it's not just that we have 73 applications live, there's a huge pipeline of apps coming in, right? You'll see marquee names across seller side, buyer side, logistics side, right? And what is interesting, I think, you know, one of the early points that I miss making is, in the unbundled world, right, the companies that are coming into e-commerce, and that's the inclusion that we bring in, are not necessarily current e-commerce entities, right? So if you go back, a lot of these entities, right, are not traditional e-commerce entities necessarily, right? But what we have done is, because we have unbundled, each, each app is able to bring its specialization, right? Like buyer apps are typically apps which have large consumer bases, right? Potentially, Kotak Bank is actually a banking app, right? So they are able to do e-commerce because they only bring in the consumer and the consumer experience, right? Logistics companies, of course, did logistics and largely 3PL. And the seller apps also, right, are not necessarily e-commerce entities, right? Several of the seller apps are actually potentially retail businesses which have are either a point of sale, uh, you know, business or a retail ERP business which have had deep relationship with retailers for many decades or are new companies trying to disrupt, right? So essentially by unbundling, right, we have brought in 73 companies in about less than a year to the e-commerce ecosystem, right? And that is the power of what the protocol is trying to do and we will continue to build further, right? Moving on, I'll keep it simple. So I think I'll take a moment just to explain this slide. It's, it's a little dense, but the way to look at it is that Let's say somebody here, you know, you open one of our apps and try to order, you know, one kg of ATA, right? So let me explain how the protocol will facilitate the transaction and the different models, all of which are, you know, democratically possible on, on the protocol and not inhibiting like the platform, there's only one way of doing business, right? So you will spin up one of the apps, say Paytm, you will search and say I want one kg of ATA, right? Stores in the vicinity, as Ravi had explained, right? Whichever has a one kg bag of ATA listed, will receive the request via ONDC, right? So the search will come to the ONDC gateway registry. We will understand that this is a, you know, grocery request and we look at apps that are grocery stores, you know, listed on there, right? And we will multicast it to all the apps that are grocery stores listed. They will look at the request, understand it and say, okay, somebody's looking for ATA, do I have a seller who has ATA? And if the seller has a one kg bag of ATA listed, they will respond, right? All of these responses come back to the buyer app, which is Paytm in this case, right? Now here, multiple models are possible, right? You may say I will offer the one kg of ATA, but logistics is something that I don't offer, right? Or you will say, I will give you a price, say 150 rupees, uh, you know, one kg plus logistics also taken care, right? Or a third where you say, okay, as a seller, I will do free delivery, no logistics cost, right? So in the first model, you will need to trigger a logistic search, okay, I'll buy ATA for say 50 rupees and there is a logistic cost of its two orders, right? In the second case, the same transaction may go that the, the seller has taken responsibility of logistics, right? Say so it's big basket and says I will do fulfillment, right? And I will trigger some fulfillment request on the network, but the price is all inclusive, you don't need to worry. 
And the third is the store says, okay, this is only one kilometer away. I will directly do the delivery, right? All of these models that a typical seller may want, the flexibility they may want, right? Unlike today where the pickup has to be by a logistic agent of the platform, etc. The protocol doesn't, you know, put such inhibitions. All models of transaction that you are comfortable with would be possible and enabled by the protocol, right? So these are the apps where you can try and place an order. Some of them are special like Namayatri, Auto in Bangalore, Yatri, uh, Taxis in Kochi Pin Code, uh, and uh, Paytm, where you can potentially look at the different domains that are live and see what can be purchased, right? So the other important thing, right, as we build, go beyond B2C, go to B2B, is that a store, like as a store, you are not just a seller, right? ODC Network also potentially is your place to buy raw materials or buy from your distribution channels, from your distributor, stockists, etc. That purchase transaction also is now starting to happen on ONDC, right? So as a store owner, you will sell your you know products and services on ONDC. And as a store owner, you'll also be a buyer of anything that you buy. It could be raw material, it could be stock, it could be products, etc. where you purchase in bulk. Both are being enabled by the ONDC network. So one network, multiple possibilities, right? So this is where we are today. We have food and beverages, grocery, home and kitchen, electronics, fashion, agriculture, health and wellness, beauty and personal care as well as mobility life, right? On B2B, we are live on grocery and fashion, right? And, and on uh, upcoming domains, we have financial products and services coming in, right? So broadly, uh, you know, a network that is, you know, underbuilt, we're building out as we speak and, you know, we'll continue to, you know, uh, be more inclusive and bring more sellers and buyers together, right? So let's take another example of how the OTC network changes the ecosystem for a buyer, right? Today, if you were, suppose in Delhi and you were to take a flight ticket to go to Kerala, right? There's a short-term assignment, you're being sent, right? You need, you need a flight ticket, you need a suitcase to carry, you know, clothes, other stuff, you need a place to stay, you probably need some support with language, right? Today, you would go to four different platforms, potentially, right? Maybe three, right? And individually purchase these items, right? Because they are on closed specialist network and closed providers who offer it. Tomorrow on the ONDC network, all of this is potentially purchasable using a single cart, right? On a single platform that you, you call as your favorite buyer application. And you're able to add all of them and also make a single purchase and a single payment, right? At the back end, the system will take care of all the different products and services being, you know, made available to you, right? Uh, so I think, I'll, you know, coming towards the end, you look at these are the benefits. I think going back to the problem statements, I'll focus on the sellers first, right? So you don't need to be, you know, worried about discovery, right? The, the first challenge of coming online is discovery. Discover, being discoverable becomes easier. You, you can set your own terms of doing business, right? And you also have support of the entire ecosystem to do the value chain at a very high level, right? As a consumer, there's a single platform to access all services, etc. And even if you're a technology company, right? A lot of components are being built in a way that are offered to other players as, you know, what we call technology service providers who will enable other companies to come online, right? So that opportunity also exists, right? Uh, also to highlight, right? ONDC is an open network capability and infrastructure. We are not a platform, right? We don't... When you say you join the ONDC network, you don't put your inventory, you know, on, on the ONDC platform. There is no platform, right? We interconnect apps. You will join a seller app like, uh, you know, eSamudai and you will bring your inventory online there. You will be discoverable on the ONDC network. There is no network on which you unload, right? What that also means is as a consumer, you will not go to ondc.com and search and say, I need this, right? And it will start coming up. Because ONDC is a network, we are, we are infrastructure, we are backend, right? There are infinite models and fertile for innovation, right? So because the network infrastructure exists, right? Think of it like when you started, you know, doing transactions on mobile phones, right? Today, practically, if you go back 10 or 15 years, somebody said, okay, I can have email on mobile, right? Somebody said, I can do flight tickets on mobile. Somebody said, I can do e-commerce on mobile, right? So similarly on the network, we expect, you know, large amount of innovation coming in and new types of transactions, new ways of business, you know, coming in, right? We're also not a central intermediary. It's a very, very important point. ONDC, while the protocol is from ONDC, the network is from ONDC, we facilitate search and discovery, eventually the transactions between the two entities directly, right? When the search and discovery is over, the actual transaction happens uh, between the buyer and the seller via the buyer app and the seller app, right? We are also not a regulator, we are a market and community-led initiative, right? Uh, with the support of the government, we don't have regulatory powers to, you know, typical questions, will you govern commission structures, etc. The answer is no. 
it is it is an open network for an open market right with that i think uh, i come to the end uh, you know it's it's a made in india digital innovation to the world there is no precedence of such a network existing anywhere in the world india is trying to do a global first uh, the advisory council that was uh, you know uh, that came together to set up on you know ndc has marquee uh, you know indians across different domains right from nandan ara sharma who set up national health authority adil right dilip was from npca all of these people came together for the setup of uh, ondc uh we the advisory council was set up in june 2021 the company ondc as a section 8 not for profit uh company was registered in december 2021 we did our first alpha transaction in april 2022 and we went live with beta in bangalore here in september of 2022 right and we continue to grow so where are we today we have crossed 50000 sellers across india we are alpha live in 273 cities we have 66 lakh uh, pro plus products and seven cities beyond bangalore are also beta live and we do, we have done about 7.3 million uh, trips on mobility till date right so with that i broadly come to the end of my presentation uh, you know happy to meet you outside and you know take any questions any feedback that you would have thank you Thank you, sir. Any questions? Has anybody got any questions, clarifications regarding why it is? Okay, we close this. Yeah, I request uh, President and Vice President and other OBs to felicitate Mr. Nair, Mr. Nitin Nair. as senior vice president and business head south india i request again the president vice president and the office wearers to Felicitate Ravi Aldipur. We are at the end of the program. We conclude with vote of thanks. my pleasure in submitting the vote of thanks at the conclusion of creative program we are very much so today's deliberations have made a dent on the development of msmes we thank mr b walidian deputy general manager bangalore regional office sidb for making this program a rich yield and harvest in the form of prudent information and awareness on the financial literacy at all msme fraternity we office bearers and kasia members enthused by the presence of past presidents of kasia president of various associations council members invitees kasia members and industrial fraternity owners for making this program very successful event we thank all the representatives of print and uh, electronic media for their presence have given us a great encouragement we are sure the message of today program will reach far and wide spread in the state on behalf of kasia we thank shri devashish pradhan agm sibbi your presentation on simplified and innovative financing solutions for msme gave ample satisfaction to all the participants we thank you very much sir we thank mr sri sanjeet patel regional head business development for your presentations and trips we thank mr nitin nayar senior vice president and business at south india for your excellent presentations on ondc We thank Ravi Aldipur 
for your just uh, for your speech on this e samudaya on behalf of kasia members we thank kasia president of his bearers for facilitating the program on for msmes we thank kasia staff for supporting the program we are very grateful to all the participants for your for your active participations with this words once again express our heartfelt thanks for making this event a purposeful and meaningful program thank you one and all and i request all the participants to have their lunch thank you so much